three, two, one. We should be live now. Yep, there we go. So, um, okay. James, yeah, you were talking, sorry about that. You were talking about, um, uh, you know, the time you had off uh, uh, as you uh, graduated early, which is awesome, man. That's great to hear. So, um, yeah. yeah. All right, we're back. Go for it. Um, yes, yeah, so if you can retell that. And sorry about that. Right. My bad, everyone. Yeah, no. So I finished my requirements for medical school early. Um, and then as a consequence, I had this big gap of time in what would be the second semester of my last year. So, um, you know, I just I, I kind of fell in love with the city of Hardby from the adventure begins and from the uh, player's guide to uh, Greyhound. Okay. And uh, I mean, the, the map was really cool. You know, it seemed like it was an underappreciated city compared to Greyhawk. Like everyone wants to go to Greyhawk. True. But when you look at the map, Hardby strategically located to as a springboard for the new modules that were coming out. Yeah, you know, like the slavers, the especially. Yeah, and the slavers. Yeah. yeah of course. It's like, you know what? There's not a lot about this city. And I always wanted to do something for the O Earth Journal since the other members of the Council of Greyhawk were just so great to interact with in the on T on AOL and all whatever we were, all the other platforms we were using to communicate in the late 90s um, that I was like, you know what, let me contribute an article and I'm going to do this article. Um, and I was working on it and I was working on it. And then there was a point where um, it was um, Nathan, uh, Nathan Irving's first issue as the new editor in chief. And he was like, when's this going to get done? When's this going to get done? And I'm like, soon, soon. And he's like, can you hurry up? I was like, I'm almost done. And I sent him a draft of it. And he's like, oh, that's so massive that I'm going to give you a little bit more time just so you can finish it up. Because he didn't, he was expecting a five page thing <laughs> and not like a 30 page thing. Right, you know? right. And what I was trying to do was basically create, you know, a module or a campaign setting, like a, yeah. like you would buy this, you know, something of this size um, to as a campaign supplement, sort of like, village of homelid or something like that um so you actually have a fleshed out city you know nothing as massive as the city of greyhawk box set but just you know that's the kind of scope i was trying to go for with it so yeah and it's 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 massive here so if we come mm -hmm. and uh and this is available on the earth journal sites for free download or journal 10 which is a great earth journal and if we come down here and this is 1999 so, um, and then we come down further and look at uh, some great things in here. There's stuff on Assassin's Guild. The, the Specialty Priest of Tritharians in here by Creighton Broadhurst. Um, you know, some wonderful stuff in, in this in this one. Uh, Leonard Lakofka has, oh, this is the one where he talks about where Liaman was all the time uh, mm -hmm. as well. Um, yep. Yeah, and then you, you also compiled the Earth Journal Index up to this point, it looks like. Yeah. Uh, um, in the same article. And then we go here to features the city of Harby and you'll be shocked how big it is. And, uh, and so we got like a hybrid here and there's Heronius too, as especially priest is in here as well. There's a lot of, uh, of information in this. This is one of the best, uh, earth journals, number 10. So let me just get to it here. And okay. Now with this, we have this dungeon one zero nine. <laughs> This is by Paul Luby, Harby, Harby City of the Scorn. So we have two different um, Harby references. Um, so Paul is lurking because he's in the UK and it's a six hour difference. So Paul, uh, good to hear that Paul Luby is on. Uh, Woe Singer is lurking somewhere, which I love to hear. Um, and th thank you for the resub. They're a real long shot. All right. So we have two different articles <coughs> that we can cross reference. So. Let's, I, I want to ask your map um, here. I put it, I put it back together because it's on two separate oh, pages. Oh, good. Yep. <laughs> so, uh, and color coded it and everything. So uh, just before we get into article, how long did it take you to, uh, to hand draw this? Um, it probably took me a few days, um, uh, maybe a week or two. Okay. Um, I had nothing to do between... <laughs> between Thanksgiving and July 1. Okay. So wow. I had like a plenty of time. Um, but yes, it took me probably a couple of weeks to sketch it out. And then, you know, probably took me a good day or two to color it in. 
So, Val Mocha, just to ask you a quick question. Do you know anything? Uh, I've never heard of them, Val Mocha. Q Samantha, they wrote some great stuff, including a lot of Harvey that they used. wonder what happened. I have no oh, idea. He was very active in, in oh. some years, I saw. On, oh, on, on AOL? On, yeah, on yeah. AOL, yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah uh, and also on Great Talk, the, the email list and stuff okay. back then. That's why I saw a lot of it. It's doing, yeah. Okay. Yeah, and Mariah McCarthy was also known as Aria 13 on AOL. Okay. And... Um, you know, they were actually featured in so so when Roger Moore created the uh, the revival of Greyhawk, um, he took yep. a lot of input from the Council of Greyhawk uh, in the process of it. And depending on who you ask and who you talk to, people will argue about how much he did or didn't listen and how much TSR did or didn't listen. At the end of the day, they listened mm -hmm. and they got a lot in Roger listened and as a tribute to everybody who helped him out, he threw in a whole bunch of Easter eggs. So when he rounded out the new Council of Eight, um, you may remember the Theodane Ariason. Yep. That's an anagram for Ariah 13, which is Mariah McCarthy's handle on AOL. He never said, told us that. Wow. That's and awesome. Do you yeah. remember how there was a Greyhawk dragon that was Hatana Mask? And they yeah, Hatana Mask, yes. Hatana Mask. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hatana Mask, Samantha Q, anagram. Wow. And so basically that was, so there was this little, it wasn't even a scandal, but basically there was a story where um, either one of them was using the other one's AOL account um, or they were the same person. And we don't know which. And it kind of blew up on AOL. And so they, uh, so as a, as a tribute to them for all their efforts in helping Roger, he did that little, this one's impersonating that one is kind of a little bit of a ribbing of them when he included their character that included, you know, included them as an Easter egg in the adventure begins. So the return of the, eight. we have like moments where we find out something that I never, ever knew. Right. Anna, this is just one right now. Yeah. I mean, seriously, that, 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 that uh, Theodine and, and uh, I, I pronounce it, Hatuna, Hutna, I always pronounce it Hutna Hutna Matata. Matata. Oh, my gosh. We're, sounds like ancient Egyptian or something. We're like actually, yeah. or actually AOL or, 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 or community members that Roger Moore named characters after. And because of, of what they, the rumor was of a scandal that was, you know, with the, using other accounts. Oh, my gosh. I never heard that. That's awesome. No one's ever mentioned that. Yeah, there's Roger. a whole bunch of yeah, there's a whole bunch of Easter eggs in there. I mean, Roger's probably forgotten by now. That's probably all true. All of the Easter eggs, um, you know. I mean, wow. You know, and there was there was this guy Night Screed. He wrote uh, "Putting the Gray in Hawk," mm -hmm. uh -huh. uh, which was like sort of a, you know, this is sort of what makes Greyhawk Greyhawk, as opposed to the Forgotten Realms or other campaign worlds. It's sort of the things that make Thanks, it Chris. unique, unique and special, and. You know, he got, he had a, there was an indirect message to like an indirect Easter egg for him. You know, a Quander got mentioned. You know, Eric Mona. Um, oh, he loves Eric. Uh, uh, yeah, he um, yeah. he he loves him, uh, which is great because Eric uh, Eric is just such a great guy. And uh, yeah, absolutely, really yeah. cool. That's so. so fantastic to hear. I mean, I just did not I did not know that. Um, wow, Monkey Greyhawk, thank you. So. We'll have to see if you can figure, find out some more of those at, at, at near the end of the discussion because, uh, wow, that uh, I know that I know that Roger always like spoke highly of of Eric and, and talked about a lot of the stuff that got incorporated in here, and we also find out a lot of the stuff like from Malden's Greyhawk map of all the stuff that that Roger like added into the Free City of Greyhawk. There's a lot of locations he added. Uh, yeah. in there as well but so uh yeah and if you if you have that that uh, wealth of information so how how long were you involved in that group so i mean i was probably involved uh from when i first got on aol so that would probably be about 95 to about 99 2000 2001 um actively i mean residency was yeah. so busy i didn't have time for much anything and then after residency i got married and moved to nashville and did my cardiology fellowship and you know i mean really kind of at that point hung up my 20. so so you're from philly are you from the outskirts of philly i you know because i consider yeah. myself from philly too i so. was gonna yeah, say you're almost neighbors yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, i'm from mount yeah. laurel <laughs> dude i'm from barrington 
Oh, that's awesome. Did you go <laughs> to how e many miles to, are that? Did you go to Eastern? Uh, no, I went to Morristown Friends School. Friends, okay, got it. Cool. Wow, yeah, that's um, so fun. One of my one of my dearest friends <laughs> um, lived. He lived in Barrington for a little while. Oh my gosh. Like they, he and his he and his girlfriend had an apartment above a house in Barrington, not far from the exit off of 295. Right. Oh my gosh, man. Small world. Did you know? I mean, Alan Groy is both is from Merchantville. Did you ever meet up with Alan at all? Growing no, up? I did not. Yeah, same here. After all these years, wow, what a small world. Yeah, yeah. I was a I was a Haddon Heights guy. So yeah. Oh, cool. My 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 cousins went there. Yep. My cousins, um, Julia and Billy Emery. Went there. That's amazing. Uh, That's small. Yeah, so they were like about ten years younger than me. So. Now you're in. The, now you're in Nashville. So uh, maybe. Um, well, one day if you ever have time, uh, maybe. And John from Blue Box comes back. He lives in Nashville. So uh, yeah. yeah, what a great. Uh, that would be a good connection. All right. Enough of me reminiscing about where I live. Um, <laughs> Keldreth at AOL.com. We're assuming that email doesn't work. So I didn't work. I don't even know the password for that email anymore. <laughs> What I I so as I said I like taking these and chopping everything apart and cross referencing everything and figuring out like what what I want to use and what I don't. So if you get these maps here, and let me just show here and show you mine. And this I and I scan them in. I re I the purples are cross referenced locations from. Um, City of the Scorned, right, from this map. The all locations are down there. Cross-referenced on that, or where I think they should be, so that there's no... And I, I found that there's very little crossover. There's a couple uh, temples and things that may be the same, but it, uh, for the most part, you have a lot of unique locations uh, separate from what Paul did, which is really cool. Uh, and it is filled, and if you take... It's like... Oh my gosh, how many pages is this thing? It's a lot... Uh, it's... 30 pages does that sound right sounds about right yeah it, it's 30 pages and each one and uh, uh so here's here's uh um um the broken loot the plow and the stars is the big one in w8 so as you can yeah. see I, i've what i've done is i've color coded cross reference the type of business and then put it place it on the map uh, on your map, and that's kind of where we are right now on this. And I, I want to, uh, and definitely want to do a tour and go over. And, uh, so, is uh, any of this in your campaign, or you just do this? Like, I want to create this. Uh, well, yeah, uh, this was going to be for my campaign. So, um, my plan was to develop a post wars next generation campaign. Okay. Because we were actively doing in the wars in our in our campaign, and this was to be post wars. You know, the people who survived the war from our campaign, um, you know, they were going to be movers and shakers in the, our Greyhawk, our new Greyhawk. So, you know, some of them get mentioned in the Hardbeat article. Um, I had a recent uh, publication in the O Earth Journal 37 um, about uh, beers of Greyhawk you may have seen. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's yeah. awesome. So, so, you know, my DM gave a couple of my characters plot armor for the wars. And, um, you know, so they were going, so my whole campaign was going to be basically you start off with, you know, low level characters, you know, where my main characters were now NPCs mentoring or giving advice, but in a weird way, they were going to be rivals of the uh, circle of eight. I like Because that. the circle of eight is all about maintaining neutrality. And a lot of the campaigns I like to do, um, I was planning on doing were to explore the idea of the problems of ascending good. So as good rises in a campaign setting, what problems does it cause? So, so, so good point. That's a great because point. I have, because, you know, Keldrath who Roger included in the adventure begins and I, and, and gets a mention in here, um, you know, he's, he's a sort of chaotic, good rogue scandal scoundrel kind of guy. But what he's trying to do is, behind the scenes build the kingdom the good kingdoms and help them forge alliances and basically they would become eventually if he had his plans overpowered and what happens when good is overpowered you know and, and I'm sure help. besides the circle of eight not being thrilled with that um you know and that's where that campaign this campaign was going to go but the, right. the hard b was going to be like the starting off point for where characters could then 
go out and it was also a harbor for where a lot of the adventures, the new adventures were nearby because, you know, Return of the Eight and the Lost Tomb series are all in the backyard of Harvey. Yeah. And so I wanted to create a place where characters could call at least a temporary home. Hey, There's so much to do in the city, but the city isn't, you're not going to get knifed behind every corner. <laughs> like I didn't want to create a, a city where you're going to die. Right. You know, yeah. Yeah. Like, a city where it's more your haven as opposed to your, oh gosh, I'm, I'm going into Ayuz and I'm going to be trying, or Duraka, and I'm going to try to get some stuff done in Duraka and I'm going to get killed because I just entered the place and they just kill people. So weird question number one, what page are you on? I'm in the maps. I'm on the last page of the maps. So th 32 of the maps. The maps, the map, oh, this booklet. The, oh, the here, it is. Booklet. here it is. Adventure begins, adventure maps. It only goes to 16. Yeah, it's the 16th map. Um, uh, the, 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 the words Isles of Woe. Last pages I see is this, are these two. Okay, so the, the writing for the, the writing for the Isles of Woe, the uh, text. Okay, all right. The description. So so it must be in here. That is awesome, man. Here it is. Isles of Woe. All right. Oh, wow. All right. There you go. I'll, so that is, that is, wow. I, Roger, Anna, you think Roger would mention some of this? Yeah, That's but it's hard to remember. <laughs> it's like he told us. It was like That's 20 years awesome. ago, and it's hard I to remember know. everything, but it's I so know. cool. But, yeah. but, but that is that mm -hmm. just uh, that ups my respect level for Roger like yeah. a thousand percent mm -hmm. that he was like, oh, yeah. he was engaged with, with the community, and he, he mm -hmm. really cared He's what He's even better than, than, than we thought, and he wow. thought and, and stuff. So this is awesome. Yep. Uh, we need to reach out to him again and say yeah, that. Yeah, and try to get him back on. I know he's had health oh, yeah. issues. Oh, yeah. But, yeah. At least we need to to tell him how awesome he is. He is. Yep. Wow. Yeah, uh, and as these guys as these guys get older, do everything you can to get them on before they mm -hmm. go. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. We lost Jim Ward, and mm -hmm. you know, I mean, I yeah. enjoyed all of my interactions with him, and yep. you know, it, you know, and like one of the things my my cousins did when my before my great uncle passed away was, you know, they they did a video of him. And they basically interviewed him in his like late eighties before he passed away. And he was telling us all these great stories from world war two and all this other kind of stuff, you know, so getting these creators on the record, I mean, is, is a treasure. I mean, you know, all, we have all this writing from Len Lakovka, who's no longer with us for, either. And we had Len on for, we had Len on 40 times. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. so, so you got him, you got him. Uh, and Jim Ward three times. I don't Jim Morton on three times. We had we had we had two Wizards three discussions with him, Grub and uh, and uh, and Ed Greenwood, <laughs> which was really awesome. Yeah, so we had some really great discussions uh, with Jim and uh, yeah, Roger Moore, Perfect Weaver from the AOL crowd. In there. Yeah, Noel's here. Wow, good to see you. So um, yeah, that 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 just is that's so wonderful to hear, Anna. You know, just mm -hmm. amazing. Yeah. All right, let's delve into this here. Um, Number one question I had, and I put it in when we were talking back and forth yesterday, was there are set names that are supposed to be in Harby, but you added one that doesn't exist anywhere else I can find, and that is you made the rulers, um, not Norbaloses, but Pharast, P-H-A-R-A-S-T. Yes. Um, yes, I did. So um, I, I couldn't find the Norbalos name anywhere. Okay. Um, and that's, that's the honest truth. I think, I'm not sure if it came out after what I did, you know, like it came out with slavers, which is right, but right after. Be. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Which is like, you know, slavers came out like a year after I, this got published. Um, okay. so, Fair so all I had was maybe a, a first name for the Gynar, mm -hmm. maybe not. And so, you know, I just picked the Ferris as, you know, the current ruling family and, yeah. It was essentially linear, but like last names change, and some you know sometimes the right guy would take a spouse's like their spouse's name, and sometimes they wouldn't, um, and so that's how I kind of navigated getting from Eden Orb to the Ferris. But the other thing I wanted to do is was I wanted to completely reboot Hardbeat in the sense that I killed off the Gynarch on the second of 
the second of the first first month, <laughs> second day of need test. You know, so that you know, like she's in. You know, the the the, the old guy arc is in all of the you know revive revival stuff, but then you know yeah, the first day of day. you know the second day of the month, I kill her. Hey, it's a great publication. So, so that way we could introduce because I wanted to, I wanted. I wanted fresh. I was really right. trying to go with fresh for my Harvey as opposed to, you know, the same players. I wanted to try to bring new players in as far as new, new players within the city. And, uh, and there's absolutely nothing wrong at all with, with that. So, um, yeah. yeah. Name for, so John Osh is named for Keys Johnson. Was that correct? Lance Scott says the John Osh family. Yes, they're they were in they were in they were in the lore. They were before me. Right, I didn't make that. Name. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah uh, there's a because all, all the other names appear to be in here, which okay, well that makes total sense, and it's not a big deal. I mean, I just I just yeah. sw swapped out. Uh, I like uh, one of my one of my grand uh, enemies of all time in the campaigns, Elite and Norbalos. So, uh, uh, yeah, I, I, you know, uh, it's a it's a minor thing, but, but what a so you have some background story in here, which is fantastic talking about all right so here, here's my question what kind of harby is it so you want to tell everyone is it the guy arc still running everything is it greyhawk is overtaking it merchants i mean it, it goes like there's 12 different versions of harby out there yeah. as far as rulership yeah so so the the, the guy arcs delegated there's there's a lot of um there's a lot of um in enmeshment of they're like the benny jesuit in a certain sense, in that, you know, really they like the, the guy narc doesn't micromanage the day to day operations of the city, but like, you know, her her father and her mother are integral players in commerce and the military. Okay. Um, and so there's a lot of loyalty of the major players. And then you have your guild and your non guild, you know, merchants. So the like a lot of the guild are very loyal and there's a lot of order in the city. Because and the city's built really been built uh, over time to have, have be on autopilot. So you have the guilds doing the guild thing. You have the military doing the military thing. You know there's enough family enmeshed into that where you know that the Gynarchs people are watching you. But there's a certain amount of we got a really good thing going here. We're not going to screw it up. And I like oh, and I like that because I really hate that the, the um, having like the, the merchants of uh, the merchant guild of Har of, of Greyhawk over to I, I despise it. I really like that as far as it's still a gynarchy. Yeah, yeah, and so um, and then and the gynarchs run the. I mean, they ultimately they have the final say, um, or she has the final say. But now you have this new gynarch who's young isn't quite ready and inherited it from her aunt okay. who's been running the place forever, you know? And so, you know, she, you know, she's really relying on her family to be her advisors who are, you know, they're in that they're already plugged in. So, you know, I wanted a stable, I wanted a place that was very stable so that when the party came over, came there, there wasn't going to be a revolution, you know, halfway through, you know, when they're coming back from an adventure. Okay. Now someone might want to do that in a city. I, I have no desire to do that. I wanted a place that was stable. And so I created a place that was stable. It's a very mercantilist economy, yeah. you know, um, you know, you know, they, and they, and they play people, you know, like the whole village of ores, for example, the whole village of ores, you know, basically they have their prices jacked up for outsiders, but outsiders don't realize it because it's either adventurers or mm -hmm. the Greyhawk military. Who's, you know, got a fort right nearby. Um, but, you know, basically, you know, all of the, all of the, uh, farmers that live there in ores are um you know they're they have a tab at the pub and they have a tab at all the stores but they never pay they don't have to never pay anybody because all the military and all of the adventurers traveling through support the economy so much that you know for them it's all like it's all on the house makes sense you know so so so, so certain things are kind of from a mercantilist approach you know they have a very um tight uh, a tight money system in hardby where they really promote trade to the level where they're like okay we don't want you leaving with money we want you leaving with goods so you know so there's a lot of trade going in and out and so there's like a big stockpile of 
money and treasure somewhere in Hardby, you know, that they've been kind of hoarding and, over the uh, years. And and like, for example, there was other things were added. I'm, I guess Sean Reynolds did it because he came, uh, I got a copy of Crossbows and Crossbones, right? That adventure that was run at Gen Con pre-slavers. And I ran yes. it, and the oars like crossbow. I think first appears in that as an example of that. You know, that has it has. It's one of the first masterwork items that has special abilities that I can think of in that era, where they, you know, non magical, but it did do some special things. So, um, which is cool. So, I'm, and I'm curious. I'm, I'm I'm wondering if like was 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 he involved in 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 the the group back then, or was it um, other writers? Sure. I'm assuming most of them were. And most of them were involved. Skip was was involved. Sometimes there were um, there there was some bickering with Skip at the time um, with some of our with some of the members of the council. Um, particularly him and Night Screed didn't get along. But but he he was he was really you know he was taking a lot of notes for um, Scarlet Brotherhood and probably for Slavers too, but for Scarlet Brotherhood especially. Um, and again, one of those stories of. Um, one of those stories of an Easter egg being put in. Um, so, yeah. so there was, there, there was this, um, there was this guy, um, you know, um, that was on, on AOL and I'm not going to name names, but you know, he was kind of a little bit of a character and a little bit of a, a little bit of a self-promoting kind of guy. And he drove us all crazy. And so, you know, I, I kind of behind the scenes reached out to um, Eric and a few other people and said, let's just have this incredible high-level discussion of uh, the Sulawese culture, but just like let's just start in the middle of it and just make it like almost like you're having an academic seminar and kind of thing, and just BS our way through it. Mm -hmm. And so we're doing it, and it was about this word, you know, it started off with talking about the you know the Sulawese language and this word Zyagogi and you know, what did it mean and all this kind of stuff. And he was talking about the Sagard novels and, and this guy who was trying to create a mod, um, an adventure for Dungeon Magazine was like, where are you guys getting this information? And we're ignoring him. We're just talking over him. And then we actually got, you know, Len to chime in and we, Len was BSing and making stuff up. And, and I think Roger caught on eventually, but anyway, so Skip, when he did the um, Scarlet Brotherhood um, supplement in the back, there's a glossary. And in the glossary, you know, the the prefix and the root, Zaya and then Gogi are in there <laughs> as scar as red and brother. Mm. And so like the this word that like we made up and we were punking this person with ends up getting put in there. So I mean, yeah, Skip definitely was engaged with us. And then if you look at his That's nickname so cool. in the table of credits, Veggie Pygmy. <laughs> That that came from one of the big arguments he was having with Night Screed, where Night Screed called him a veggie pygmy. <laughs> wow! <laughs> so he put that in. I mean, like I think uh, I almost let myself you talking know, about funny when I was, when I was when I opened yeah. up the book and I was reading that. I was like, I can't believe he put that in. That was hilarious. That is wonderful. Yeah. Speaking of awesome, Rob Koontz is watching right now. Oh, hi, Rob. All Hello, the way Rob. from all the way from Corsica. Yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> wow. Yeah. He'll be on Saturday morning, special show, 9 a.m. So, um, yep. wow. All right. Well, we got – man, I'm finding out stuff here. It's just – it's amazing, the stuff, Anna, when yeah. you, we find out. So, Anna, please, if you have questions at any point, please ask. Well, I, I, one other thing, your cartography thing, is that I like the, the – I love the little map you have of the the uh, uh, the catacombs in in uh, catacombs in, in Hardby. It, it's oh, it's yeah, just yeah. a sketch, but I still love it because – like I said er, just before we came on, meaning it's the, the information you want to convey there rather than the style of the map that is a lot of times essential. And and this is so cool because it's like a little treasure map you can you can see. So and you put the coastline in there. And that that's I, I love the the fact that you have and there's a couple of locations and stuff in there too. So so those yeah, are I want great to have additions. some thank you. Yes, I want to have some sort of a dungeon crawl type yeah. thing for the players to do. Um if they wanted to do something within the city or if there was a hook, um, you know, cause I included, I included slippery Keta um, in there. Um, yep. She, she escaped from a three and a four when we did a three and a four. Mm -hmm. It was yeah. a flavor we didn't get. Um, 
you know, we killed the rest of them. There is no tourist Mac in my world because my monk killed Negathar a lot. So, well, that's good because a lot of people wanted to kill him, right? Yeah. You know, and, and another question that I, th I have heraldry, I forgot that yeah. you had heraldry in this article. So now I need to, to, to recreate that in my style and, and add it to the heraldry yeah, library. And, yeah. and, and I want to, to ask you a little bit how you there's, came up with the like heraldry right so to speak, because they have the, the interesting star shape and, and no, that's in, in the beginning at the, in the title of the article, that's the, the, the TSR uh, from the, the Greyhawk box set of the Hardweave Mariners. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So but um, in, the, in the beginning, yeah, you have the 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 big, yeah, the blue background, and then yeah. you have the the a kind of a star with the pentagram in the middle, where where you have a, a a crescent moon, and then another star at the bottom. Can you please tell me about the design? How do you came up with yeah. that? Yeah. So I mean, the design. I mean, I think. I mean, it was really it was sort of inspired by sort of the stereotypical wizard's robes. Mm hmm. So oh. like the wizard's robes are generally like when you close your eyes and imagine a wizard, you know, at oh. least one I do, like blue, navy blue, dark robes. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, the, the wizard's hat with the stars and the moon and that sort of thing. So I kind of started off with that idea and I try to do like a stylized placement of stars and try to incorporate a moon in it. Mm -hmm. um, and I just kind of fooled around with it until I found something that I kind of felt was balanced and yeah. worked. And, mm -hmm. You know, I mean, this was late 90s mac photoshop kind of thing or yeah. Adobe illustrator and mm -hmm. no artist so no I mean, no I but it's yeah, it, yeah I'm, I'm more interested in, in again i'm interested in the design and and for me when i saw it it was like okay i'm trying to read read symbology into this and yeah. and i thought the the triangular star i thought that was the symbol of the cairns and then with an elven influence from the the, the crescent moon inside it and then the star at the bottom, I wasn't clear, had, didn't have any idea, so to speak. So, 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 but that's, that's me trying to think sim what the symbols mean in, in heraldry, so to speak. Yeah. I was not thinking of any of that, but that's okay. Great. So yep. we're going to write that down. <laughs> yep. So, so that, that's that. just me. When I see heraldry like this, I always try to, okay, what are these symbols meaning from, from a Greyhawk standpoint, so to speak? Yeah. I mean, and, it was and, really just, what would yeah. a wizard shield look like if a wizard was allowed to use a shield? Yeah, mm -hmm. it's kind of that's kind of where I went with it. Yeah. Oh, but but it's cool. So so I'm going to make this and add it as an alternative for hard B. So anyone who wants to use it can can use that. Yeah, too. and we, so, we got yeah. Brian Blumklatz's as well. Exactly, so. Brian Blumklatz did one that I then added again, and and I like Brian Blumklatz's design too, with the lotus flower and then the white and 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 the blue. That is the same colors that is in the Narwhal. So it seems like that was initially some family or the 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 genarchy or, or or some some initial family had ruled over both areas. So the the color and then the lotus flower, so to speak. And I added the 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 wooden throne as a symbol on yes. that that shield as well in my version, in my campaign version, so to speak. But there's nothing stopping you can have different versions, meaning yeah. this might be one that is used now or been used in history or or something. So it's always cool to have more heraldy, more heraldic options for your campaign, yeah. so to speak. There you go. And a lot of people like the idea of the six families. Yep. Yeah. And so with the six families, you could even argue, you know, like the John Ash family would have a different one than Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Or, great, great and, idea. No, yeah, that's hundred like, percent. The Ferris, you know. Yeah. Um yeah. So, so we can say it's the Ferris, you know, family crust, mm -hmm. you know. Um yep. Harvey. So. Yep. That that's awesome. So yeah, that's my my the latest version I using for, for my campaign. I, I kind of took and because I've we had that from an illustration of the throne, and I was like that is such a cool symbol of of Harvey. So I just yeah. wanted that on the heraldry, but I also wanted to to keep Brian Gloomclot's design. So I love the colors in the background, and I like the lotus yeah. red standing out from the background. So I just combined it. Nice. But I also think it's cool to to have your version of it. So I'm I'm going to to steal that design and make a, a, a something that looks like this based on your design too. Awesome! Yeah, I can't wait to see it. Thank I know, you. Anna, yeah. Anna finds a heraldry and she just jumps right on it. Oh, yeah, great. jumps yeah. straight on it. I want to explain it. So, 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 so then I, before, when I saw it, when I looked at this article, I was like, oh, damn, that, that must be. So I needed to ask you about it. But yeah, but it's cool That's that it's great. just a wizard's robe. But oh. now we can put a little bit more, more, even more overthinking into it. So, yeah. 
So I noticed in, in uh, history and some things that I did not know that they'd already existed. Now, I was not a big reader of Rogers 2.5, Grail Convention yeah. Begins. When is the Throne of Wood first mentioned? Because you have it in your article. Is it in Ro- Is it in? Is it in Adventure Begins? I think it goes back even before that. Yeah. I think it's from the ashes. I yeah, I think. Yeah, that's why I think I heard think about so? it. There's okay. Some, yeah, I think so because that's when we first got a a deep kind of deeper look and at at Hardby and some descriptions, and the saga of Old City might mention it even in in the yes. the second book because there okay. you have one of the Daedri, I think is that the the soldier. That, that she's from, or the knight that is from, from Hardby. Deirdre, and, uh, she's a Gurnish gear, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. 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 So, so, so that might be from, from the Gord okay. books too, that they mentioned, because okay. I remember it was a, a thing that I've heard, but I'm not sure where I picked it up the first time, so to speak, but it's, it's been around for a while. Yeah. So why don't we jump into some, uh, some, great location. Daedri, thank you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It, it, was it? it yeah. Lo- Longlands, yeah. Lo- Longlands are the ones that are Mayheen worshippers. So yeah, yeah. yeah, so you have like um I'm a, um uh and this came out that we have we we ja, we ji, however you pronounce it, worshippers and you have Mayheen worshippers and then there's a third one. Is it Alana? What's the third one? Deity. Oh my gosh, my brain's off. Everyone, excuse me. Uh, my, uh, you know, I had a got up at five o'clock in the morning and had a little procedure today, so I'm not like a hundred percent on it today. So, you wrote a lot of history, which is fantastic. Yeah. Um, how much of it is brought from scratch or pulled from a couple of references, or you know? I want to say it's about fifty fifty. Okay. Mm-hmm. It's about 50, it's half of it is, I mean, you'll see the overlap with uh, Paul Luby's article or any of the other write-ups where they, where they talk about sort of the history of Greyhawk, history of Hardby. Um, but about half of it, I was trying to, you know, cause there's these skips uh, of uh, gaps of like a hundred years at a time. And so I wanted to have create events that filled in the gaps over those hundred year, fill in those gaps over those hundred year periods that really weren't described. So it's about 50-50. Okay. Yeah. So the I names like, that are oh, sorry, unfamiliar are, I completely made that up. And then the names that you've heard of before, Jonish and Norb and all that, that was you know me restating what other people have stated before me. Jonish, Gurnish Skier, Havel, um, is it Havelos? Longland, Norbalos, I'm missing one. Yeah. Thanks, Worker. What's that? Hardfield. Is in Hardfield Manum? Manum, Manum, Manum. That's it. Manum. Manum the one I'm missing. Havilos I got. Manum. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah, that, yeah, Paul and yours. So Langscath is Paul Luby, everyone. So <laughs> <laughs> Which is awesome. Um yeah. but they're in they're in they're in gyms as well, all but the the Norbalos. So um Far, you know, in Farris and said, so. yeah, because the Norbalos didn't exist until after I wrote this, so that's why they weren't there. And I mean, they were kind of either, right, you know, pretenders claiming to be descended from Ina Norb, or they were actually descended from Ina Norb, but your names change over centuries. There's like a little bit of name drift, right? Yeah. Which makes like some guess. Yeah, I like the fact that you make the the hard be older than Greyhawk. In, in, in a lot of sense. And and I like that because to me, it seems like Hardby is the most natural of locations, at least oh, to yeah. begin with for oh. a city, meaning it's, it's the, that you have the river coming out and it's, it's access to the ocean and stuff like that. So to have like a trade city or something older at that location makes to me a lot of sense. The city of Greyhawk makes even more sense, but it needs to be developed and it needs kind of more investment capital and stuff to make, make sense to, to put it where well, it is. So pl- to speak. Plus so the river it, doesn't, it doesn't work. You, you know, exactly. You, that That's the thing. So, so my, my work yeah, workaround is that say that the Silintan wasn't, it was originally the Silintan uh, flowed through the, both the Silintan and Nessa river drained, Nurdiv drained both ways, but that was just after after the, I had an ice age that was just prior to the migration, so to speak. So for for a few, for like a century or two, the, both rivers were there. But then eventually, when when the big ice had melted, 
then then the rivers actually meaning like in nature lakes don't have more than out, one outlet for any extended period of time because the lake will simply reduce or sink the, the surface will go down until there is only one outlet and and that's what happens the nessa river became the, the the outlet and that meant that that was just a, a valley through the hills but then when the great kingdom came about they realized the potential of actually digging up the channel again. So they they dug in and created a channel from the Grey Run and down to the Salinta, so to speak. So they created that 10, 15 mile of, of that that was only there temporarily during the, the big melt, so to speak, and then created the city that have access both to, to the Salinta and, and the, the ocean and and becomes a hard port on the near Dib. And and that makes sense then that that becomes even a more strategic location, but it requires a lot of investment to make it big. And to me, that fitted more with the story of, of Greyhawk becoming, going from a town, little town of Salintan to then become a big city and metropolis is with the help of Grey Kingdom and all the investment of people coming in and, and all of that stuff. But Harvey was there and bigger to begin with and then was kind of, overtaken in, in size and importance from Greyhawk much later, so to speak, in its history. So I think you reflect that. I, I agree with you when you see your your part of the history kind of I took that as your your history was one of my, my points of inspiration for for kind of building my version of, of the city of Greyhawk history. So Soros magic can do anything. Selden needs to be completely rewritten from the presentation of City Greyhawk because it's Sam says. So there's a yeah. lot of there's a lot of yeah, fairy the fairy forwards and all there's a lot of stuff that's left yeah. to interpretation that you know we don't need to get into here in this discussion. No, but it's but, it's simply yeah. you you can you can yeah. just you don't need to meaning I'm overthinking things. That's one of my, no, my trademarks. So so but if you don't do it you can just simply say Selintan is there, Nessar is somewhere else and you don't need to, to work yeah. it, to, to do much with it but I like to make it a bit deeper so to speak that I've made that into my career yeah absolutely so, which yeah. is which is mm -hmm. cool yeah all right so how comes the big cross reference uh, and just noting some differences between the two and I think the yeah. number one difference is uh, there uh, Paul is your population is really low on this 5100 seems really low for hardby Whereas um, a New York Journal 10, I think it's like tw uh, almost 20. 21,000. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so that's. And I a, like that much better. That, that yeah. su suits me but, much better. But it's probably yeah. a post war thing. Whoops, I'm all over the place. Here. Well, Sorry. it's part of the Greyhawk history. The, 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 every edition and new version of, of Greyhawk, the, the, the population numbers have been, been inflated. And there's a Right. First, it was that it was only the the adult yeah, it kind was of nothing, ma right. ma warrior population 000, that was counted because it was yeah. like war. That's it was official, numbers. Yeah. yeah, it was the numbers that were used cool. uh, as a war gamer, so to speak. Yeah. And then came more like total population numbers. And then they increased them a little bit more in Living Greyhawk Gasset here as well. So, yeah. Well, maybe they're only counting the women in Hardbeat. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yes, that might very well be. That's so cool. So yeah, have That's a good point. Uh, that's a good point. Yeah, you counted them all, and then you added up double them. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, you know, you have a lot of, uh, yeah, it's it, it's definitely a line as the, the that other one. So you have the Harvey yeah. Merchants Alliance um, here, and then you have this map here showing, and they're similar maps um, with uh, with that, uh, and then we're talking about the, the the military, which is where things change a little bit too. But let's go back here and talk about you. You get into guilds, which is great. Which I love, yeah. you know uh, that's fantastic, and you get into little and detail festivals and yeah, yeah. daily life. Mm -hmm. You know, talking about it, it's kind of got that Greyhawk City feel to it from the box set, which I I, I applaud you on doing that. Yeah, um, you know, talking about when that you know uh, the judge you know judges meet the, uh, the council uh, meets of guildmasters, um, and then there, uh, I like how you threw in here talking about the fifth cairn from the star cairns is even in here. So we're talking yeah. about that era of that end of second edition era yeah. moving into And I was trying third. to throw some hooks in. Yeah. I was trying to throw some hooks in, you know, and sort of linking it to, you know, those adventures. And then in addition, um, you know, one of the things here is the characters that are mentioned below there. Rhiannon and Lauren Thade. Yep. And then Mirabilis, the illusionist. Yep. Yep. So we actually ran Crypt of Lysandrid as a one-shot. Wow. Um, my friend Scott and I. And... I, I was the DM and Scott was playing a few characters. And so, you know, 
we had we, he ran his illusionist and my my tomb raider i have a fighter magic user thief who's half elven Love who's it. a tomb raider and so he was running those two through it and since it's a puzzle module rather than a combat module i mean you know he was able to navigate it pretty successfully um yeah. but yeah. so i kind of gave him a shout out when i was writing this it also says you plundered the northern of uh, most of the four star cairns so that's the first yeah, that's one. bs that never happened oh that didn't happen okay that didn't happen so okay my guys so we were gonna do, we were my, gonna do the star cairns my guys were eh, on the star cairns but I've, I've tied in the the one has a necromancer in it and i've tied in that she uh is is she gets um Every time she gets killed, the the high pass uh, coven of female necromancers who they just met a couple weeks ago. If you guys were watching, um, they clone her. Uh, Yellick is her oh. name. They keep on cloning her. Yeah. So and she comes back a little more corrupted each time. But uh, yeah, fun times there. With- well, they shouldn't be cloning her near those ley lines. <laughs> <laughs> yes, those, uh, those ley lines is what makes that module a hot mess. That is true. That is it's true. Like, oh, great. All this treasure, and I want none of it. <laughs> yeah. There's Away also, from me, please. There's all sorts of issues in that. Uh, I mean, it's not. Oh, I, love, a... I love the, but I will say I love the baby beholder. Yeah. Oh, th- yeah. That is, uh, that is good. That was like, I mean, I, I thought that was like my favorite part of the Star Cairns was, you know, this completely depressed, dejected, you know, adolescent beholder. I'm, I'm like, you know, the right party would adopt them. <laughs> and then they would have a beholder in their party. I mean, just kind of like, I mean, Bartleby yeah. the Brass Dragon. Right. I mean, this is a total Bartleby, Bartleby the Brass Dragon situation. Either you throw <laughs> up the birthday party or you don't. And the right party would throw this beholder the birthday party and bring him to Hardby. I love the golem one where there's a iron golem dog that's almost like a morning canon's hound right and uh, and yeah. my, my, the one guy uh, alan one of alan's characters actually has it still his fire elementalist actually has that ha- that that thing from the star cairns so he's like i, I never have to worry get snuck up behind i just <laughs> with that thing so yeah that'd be your group are we count uh, all right so and we talk about the festivals which is cool great moon's glory 11th of readying yes is, is that Anna? Do you is that new or is that something you put in? Uh, that's something I put in. Cool. So There's something to add to my, the list. Yes. Yeah, so my high school would do this thing called May Day, right? And every four years it would be this Renaissance festival, and you know there was you know sort of there was sort of the dance around the Maypole, you know the crowning of the May Queen, and so I wanted to kind of do something that was a shout out to my old high school with the Harding Academy or not Harding Academy the um, Hard B Academy, you know, where the students do this procession and they do this thing on Great Moon's Glory. Um, you know, that was kind of a little bit granola, a little bit druidy, druidic, and kind of touched with like all of the different cultures that are around Hard B. You know, and so these basically they have a, you know, like a May Queen and a May, May Consort, um, because it is a gynarchy. And so actually the whole fun thing about it is that the actual Gynarch comes and brings a feast for these students. So like, you know, the Gynarch is saying, you know, I'm making appearance where you guys are impersonating me. It's like this sort of like, you know, I want to get, I want to give a gift to the May queen kind of thing from the school. So it's kind of a, you know, it's kind of, it's, it's a, it's a light fun event that if the party's there, when that's going on, you know, you could always do something with that. And, you know, create some sort of like one that's shot of great to have fla- local flavor yeah. like that it's like yeah. i had a velvediva fishing contest in 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 the town along the river when they got there so so yeah what's up curtis also you have dark knight here by the way i'm gonna be a, i'm gonna be that guy so was it a spring clean for the may queen yes zeppelin and yep. so hello curtis yep dark knight another one 11th of good yeah. month. Dark is yeah, basically every culture needs to have a Halloween. Yes. Mm-hmm. So this is sort of a play on Halloween. And again, tying in Lysandrid to it, who's a sort of a, I used him as a local boogeyman because he was, you know, in, when you read the module for the Crypt of Lysandrid, they mention, you know, how his name is sort of as a boogeyman to scare the children to, Mm-hmm. You know, keep them from you know going into the woods or whatever. Be careful, Lysandra will get you. So I decided to make a holiday out of it. 
Yeah, and have a local boogeyman makes a lot of sense because you can't scare kids with something they don't know about. You need something with, with more kind of local appeal and, and yeah, something they could have heard about before you need to scare them. So, yeah. Yeah. Damone recommended the side two Let's up on four. Yes, he did, but he played physical graffiti instead. So <laughs> from Fast Times Original High, Curtis, see? Quoting, quoting, yes, bad movies. Always play side two Zep four. So, uh, Foundation Day, second of flock time, celebrates anniversary that day that uh, Ina Nor Norby. Uh, so it's it's Norby, which is close to Norbelos. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. So is is uh, Norbelos? Is that Norbelos family trying to take that name and right. you know kind of say we're descended from that, or was that it sort of be. just a natural evolution of the name? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so, you know, I mean, just like I mean, when you if you've read Dune. Yeah. You know, when you get to Chapter House and um, Heretics of Dune, you know, all the names changed. Yeah, and, and have a name that, that ties into a god or, or deity in your world, that, that's make perfect sense because you want to tie, if you believe that god has power and whatever, you want to associate yourself with it. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so that festival is basically sort of their found, you know, yeah, foundation day. It's the, it's the day that Ina Norb arrived in where in where this village was and mm -hmm. basically strafed it with a bunch of fireballs and said, "Hey, I'm here. I'm in charge." Yeah, and whether that's yeah. true or not doesn't matter. It's it's now legend and and it's being held as the the, the, the true story. So yeah. yeah, that is cool. Mm -hmm. All right, so here you go. Twenty uh, eighth Gynarch of Hardby. You have is Mariana Forest, fifth level. Yes, and, and you have is an enchantress. So you're using second edition rules at this time. It looks second like. edition rules. Yeah, this was all written for second edition. Nice. So yep. you have her mother here, also. Her I mother's know. a fighter, yep. and her mother's was a sister of the Gynarch. Oh, okay. It, it seemed to be so, both an arcane and a martial tradition in Hardby that lives side yeah. by side, yes. so to speak. Yeah, no, there, there absolutely is. And that's kind of where I was like, there's three pillars to Hardby and it's magic, mm -hmm. it's trade, and it's the military. Mm -hmm. And so they're going to yeah. be seamlessly integrated and intertwined to each other if you're going to have a strong and successful Hardby. Yep. You know, and I didn't want to have really a dysfunctional hard B or a, a hard B that was, like I said, danger around every corner or an unstable one. You know, I kind of think that they got the raw end of the deal from Greyhawk. Yeah. You know, where it was mm -hmm. sort of this, you know, they're kind of rivals and there were time where they were kind of dependent on Greyhawk. And I never really liked that. And, you know, I kind of tried to play a lot of it off of they let Greyhawk think that they you know, they were under the thrall of Greyhawk. They just kind of were being patient. Yeah, and I yeah, I see the the, the relationship within Greyhawk and, and Hardby as a rivalry where they, they are dependent on each other because yeah. both of them as trading places need meaning Hardby is the, the key to the ocean. And Greyhawk right. is the key to the the, the, the the key to reaching the rest of the the, the in, internal part of, of the Greyhawk, so to speak, east and west and north and, and all of that. So so in order to be really prosperous, they both need each other because they are one half of, of the, the the setting wide trade, so to speak. And they exactly. can be, yeah, but that also means that they need to share things and 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 it's a kind of a turf war between them. So yeah. and I also have it that now when when tourism act, the world has become much more difficult and hostile and, and and unstable, so to speak, after the war. And that to me had them brought them together because they realized that, oh, we need to cooperate more than usual than we have in the past because we can't dither around anymore because we might need to defend ourselves. So right. when yeah. Taurus Mack was on the both Greyhawk and Hardbeast borders, then all of a sudden the, the, the need to cooperate became more obvious, so to speak. Yeah. And and I kind of likened it to a sibling rivalry. Yeah, and, exactly. Yep. And, you know, the, the relationship with the, the, the Greyhawk Mountaineers and the other troops – it, you know, it, it had its moments, but I, you know, they, I think it was kind of sort of a, they, they try to get along. If you can yeah. excuse me one moment, my dogs are acting like Sure. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. But, but, but I, yeah, I also like the, the fact that it's like a friendly rivalry and they have different things, meaning Greyhawk has its size and it's kind of setting yeah. wide reach, but Hardby has its older history and, and it's kind of 
so, over the seas outlook. While yeah. James has stepped away, let's go yeah. over here to Landscape. Uh, mm -hmm. Is that right? Paul Luby's, which is Harvey City, the scoring in, in number 109. I'll uh, note that here, there's a huge, the I mean, whoops, it would be nice if I brought it up. Uh, uh, okay. There's a, there's a, no problem. There's a huge difference. Uh, the Harvey Merchants Alliance really runs the town. Um, um, with, with a, a trade group and uh, a lot of the names are mentioned in here that you see in the slavers as well you know so you, it's it's it, a really good job done uh but right here <clears throat> um red tap mandel <clears throat> is uh actually a trusted lieutenant of vesper who took over from a tour and death stalker in the assassin's guild so <clears throat> what i've done here is i've created a conflict where uh on this that the Greyhawk Thieves Guild and the Assassin's Guild are trying to make inroads into the Harby Guilds. That's kind of my happy medium with both of these. And that one of the PCs <coughs> in the Harby group, played by Bill, is actually a spy for Greyhawk. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, hey, I'm sorry. Was that a spoiler? But, you know, how many of them are watching? Um so that there's a lot of that intrigue going on between all the guilds where, you know, the, the, the guild, you know, the Thieves Guild in Greyhawk especially wants to k take control. Instead of me doing the full military takeover, I'm trying to do the sub subterfuge as far as the guild, Thieves Guilds go. And I got kind of got that idea right here when I saw that Red Tip Mandel was in here, um, you know, in, in, in Paul's. So the merchants wish they thought they had ran the town. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, uh, that's true. That's true. There's a lot of there's a lot of backstabbing and selling out. True. That's true. Yep. Okay. So, um, your Harby Marines, uh, Admiral's a different, of course, a different name than Paul's. That's fine. Uh, you know, that's the great thing. Oh, so here's a funny thing there, James. You have Sly Keta, Slippery Keta getting away, and Carlos Slicing has an entire adventure based off of her because she he, he had her get away, too. It's yeah. funny. You know, so uh, great minds think of alike, you know. Mm -hmm. so, Thank yeah. you. <laughs> I'm honored to be in his company. Yeah, he's he's awesome. Definitely awesome. All right, so let me see what else we got. There's Keldra. Go back up. There it is. Oh, there he is. There he is. And he's 1417. See, that's, see, Anna, those mage thieves. Yeah. They mm -hmm. get up there because yeah. that thief, that thief the jumps thieves, right up. So, yeah, they have yeah. very... Favorable XP tables. Nice. Yep. Yeah, especially if they make it through GDQ and survive. <laughs> no, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Yep. And then they got mm -hmm. a ton of stuff. So uh, those yeah, giants we give you good GDQ, XP. Because we were running GDQ in the context of the wars. Oh, okay. okay. Uh, yeah. And so instead of having it be before, which is sort of traditional, we were doing it during uh, the war. Were you doing the return to uh, against the giants? That one? No, we're doing the original. Okay. Yeah. All right. but, but that makes perfect sense because I think Carsardian took a lot of inspiration from GDQ when he wrote the stories about the war and the giant incursions well, into they redo it. the West they, and stuff. They yeah. redo it in that event, mm -hmm. that mega adventure. Uh, is, that, yeah. um, is that Bruce Cordell? I think Bruce did that one, didn't he? Yeah. In um, return? Yeah. yeah. So uh, Bruce was everywhere during the second and early third edition mm -hmm. era. Oh, look, Belvoir gets mentioned. Belvoir? Belvoir the Fourth. Keldrith has maneuvered his way into the courts of Belvoir the Fourth and Linward. Yeah. Wow. Well, well, we our campaign started in Furiandi. Nice. So when, yeah, so so we're like really big Furiandi fans in our campaign, and so you know, you know, Belvoir and all those guys, you know, we're we're like I said, we, those were kind of we we knew them. Linward, you know, we never really did anything with the Great Kingdom. Right. Or the, or the, or the, or um, uh, that South Province or Keyland. Yeah, Keyland. yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, Keyland. Keyland. Was, um, Keyland. Yeah, and then Keyland was Scotty. So she was Kimber the daughter of the guy from the wars, and then he died. I killed him too. <laughs> so, I killed off a lot of the old guard. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so Nelson, I'm going to ask Eric Mona Saturday. 
if as long as I get remember, because he's playing in my game with Ed Greenwood and the Slob Squad Squad and all for this crossover wedding event from Gary Khan. So I'll see Eric Saturday and I'll ask him if he's created the throne of the, uh, the throne of wood. Um, all right, uh, local guilds. The six guilds of Harby are on the gears of the economic machine of Harby. So we got the Longshoremen and Dock Workers Guild. Now, <laughs> this is I love this guild. In fact, let's show yeah. some pictures. So this is uh, we had I had a big war between uh, a head of the priest of uh, a priest of Zilchis and Alita Norbalos and um, let me see if I can uh, fight 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 scenes uh, hopefully it's this one all right this is on this is on the the waterway and so we got all sorts of fighting with dock workers the dock workers were the thugs <laughs> and, oh and wow then, oh yeah yeah so um, is that a water elemental yeah it is I forget who summoned it. Uh, someone summoned the, the water. Yeah, there's a water elemental there, a wall of fire, and there's fighting going on all over with, uh, you know, as you can see, uh, where, where the th there are a couple thugs on here, up here. Yeah, they're all over the place. The Dock Workers Guild um, was like the, the um, Alita had used them as armed muscle. Um, let me see if I got a better angle. This is from the fog, but it shows that that area of, of the docks pretty well there same same oh, wow. area yeah oh yeah yeah a lot of that there it's called the lucky kraken i got a better pick there that's the southern point by the way here's it yeah even though it's 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 um there yeah it says lucky kraken but it's a great oh, i like that yeah definitely so that's the southern point yep so oh yeah i've done a lot of hard bee adventuring and a lot of um a lot of uh fun stuff in the area let me see one more. This is a good angled picture of that before the fight started of the docks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So of that area of it. Because the docks always fascinated me because they had the, like, um, as you can see in a later picture, I got the crane. I, uh, the crane was a huge thing. It says there, yeah. Harvey's known for these massive, um, you know, uh, cranes. You know, they're yeah. known for that. And, uh, oh, it's in this one. No, it's not. Yeah. Damn it. Okay. Yeah. And, and P Paul and I took different takes on that as well. Uh -huh. So for him, the, the 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 cranes were sort of a sticking point, and they were sort of a controversy because like the one of the guilds wasn't happy, the Longshoremen's Guild wasn't happy because basically it was taking jobs away. Yeah. Oh, okay. And, okay. And for me, they were centuries old, and they were sort of the seventh one. I describe them as the, one of the seven wonders of Greyhawk, or seven hundred. Right. Lower, yeah. You know, mm -hmm. um, I don't know what the other six are, uh, but. You know, <laughs> I was selling it at the time. And yeah. uh, it was just one of those things where for me, it was sort of a point of pride for the city, you know, because, you know, their mercantilist approach to economics was such that it was, it was working very well for them. And, yeah. you know, they weren't worried about losing jobs. You know, like I, I you know, I mean, I'm not, I'm not an economist, but I mean, my goal wasn't to have like, you know, people losing jobs and it being a mess like that. And I even integrated the Rene nicely into it yeah because there there because there's both deep it's a deep water harbor mm -hmm. but there are shallow water areas you know so they were basically you know the renee have a lot to contribute you know yeah. if they're treated well and so it's one of those things where like they're they're basically given rent free because they can do some things that really no one else can with regard to navigating rivers mm -hmm. You know, if they have anything that helps profits, like the cranes, whatever. So, so uh, yeah, yeah, no, exactly. So I was like, so I, so I included them in this too, and mm -hmm. gave them an opportunity to be included. I mean, yeah, one of my characters is a uh, half elf, um, half Renny. Um, oh, nice. Fight, he's a fighter thief, but he's got psionics. Okay. And so you know, we the psionics is kind of like the the whole like I mean, I don't know if you guys watch Peaky Blinders. Yeah. Like you know how like when uh, when they're talking about you know the having the sight, so right. like how do you explain psionics in a game, when, especially when you had a fighter thief with it? It's like oh well he's got the sight just like his mother did, you know, kind of thing. And so we kind of kind of rolled with that and uh, you know kind of made him a bit of an interesting character because originally he was an assassin and we were going to be using a lot of paladins at a party and it was just not going to work. So I disguised him as a half elf thief, fighter thief. And then we liked him so much. I was like, "Can we just retcon him?" And the DM's like, "Yeah, we're just retconning him. I like him the way he is, the new way." So retconning is a great thing, man. Yeah. Right? 
So uh, Rex Fallis asked, what, what canon sources for Harvey were available when James wrote his article? And that, it was all it was all boards, right? It was all the message, a lot of it. It was, it was in the message boards. If you go to the I last page, the bibliography. Yep, let me do that. You know, I had, you know, the, the second edition, some of the second edition materials were available. Um, the Adventure Begins, you know, the box set, the folio from first edition were available. Um Scourge you know, of the Slave Lords, the A series all put together, which had a little extra tidbit in it here and there. Yeah. Yeah. And the tidbits are what what I took from right. for, from there. Scar and then there was Scarlet Yeah, the Scarlet Brotherhood was already out. Yeah, but not um, but not slavers. Yeah. But not slavers. And then the City of Hardbees from the best of um the best of Greyhawk comp compilations. Um, you know, Eric Mona, um, Nathan Irving, Samantha Quick, and uh, um Mariah McCarty wrote some materials, wrote some materials in that about Hardbeat. And, you know, I, I, pull, I pulled those and used those as sources of inspiration as well. But I didn't have, you know, this was all before Paul's article, so I didn't have Paul, Paul's article. You know, I mean, there may have been some stuff lurking in some other dungeon magazines. I know he cited them in his article as sources of inspiration, but I didn't, I didn't have access to those. I mean, I didn't read those. I probably had the dungeons in my basement, but, you know, I, never, I hadn't read all of them because they came out when I was in college. So this is what wild. we need to find. This is this is the, is the city of Harby two fixing Harby uh, one. Another perspective. Best of Greyhawk one by Eric Mona. I don't even know what that is. So so those are compilations from either Grey Talk or compilations from the message boards from AOL from the mid to late nineties. Oh oh, there it is. Are you hiding all these on us, Nelson? I have I don't even know what this stuff is. Holy jeez. Look at this. Yeah. City Hard B1 by Q Samantha. All right, I right, right. give me a sec. I'm gonna I'm gonna risk crashing the stream here. Wow. Let me save this. I have them on my hard drive. I can email them to you. Um let, uh, he, uh, Paul Luby put them in chat. So what I can do is the following. I I'm gonna, you're gonna hear double you're gonna hear double sound for about five seconds. Give me one second here. Twitch. Okay. I'm just gonna bring up the chat here. And then I'm going to link. And Jay is experimenting yeah, again. Yes, yeah. I am. Jay is experimenting <laughs> again. There we go. Yeah. Jay is experimenting. Dangerous. There we go. Did it go up quick enough? Did I, did I do it too? too did I, I didn't do it fast enough, did I? You. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. I did it again. All right. You did be, it again. Got to be real quick, careful on the Zoom. Let me see. Uh, one second here. Um, yeah. Yeah. I got. I like. I got Zoom. I got Zoom minimized and maximized. Uh, all right, so one sec. I, I don't want to crash anything, so give me a second here. Um, it did not work. You still there, James? I'm right here. All right, yeah, yep. uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's only showing your 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 pics. Um, give me a second here, and I think I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have the to. Zoom seems to be unaffected in at least in my end. Yeah, yeah. hold on. Yeah, so, Zoom's working for me. There we go. Yep. There we go. I just had to return to meeting and reopen it. There we go. Okay. All right. I didn't have it open. I didn't keep it open long enough. One more time. I'll try again. Um, let's see if I can do this here. Uh, Twitch. Boom, boom. And this time I'll leave it open an extra second. So we just keep. Yeah, because normally uh, I don't like doing this on. Yeah, because normally uh, I don't like uh, here doing we go. this on. Yeah, because normally uh, there we I don't go. like. Uh, here doing we go. There we yeah, go. Normally, uh, there I don't we like go. Okay, it's up. There we go. Got it. Wow. I have never seen this. You guys Best are holding... Greyhawk? Yeah. Have you ever seen this, Anna? Sure, I have it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> but I didn't uh, <laughs> read it for for this uh, location. So wow, say, that's yeah. awesome. Okay. I have well... them as I have them as simple text. That's okay. how old my my copies wow. are. Oh, that's good. I mean, now I have this one by Quander. The City Hard B Two by Quander. Wow, by Eric Mona himself. Fixing Hard yeah. Two Three Four. Okay. I will read this, read through this at your leisure, everyone. So, um, are yeah, those all... were sources. Those were sources of inspiration for me. Oh my gosh! I, I'm assuming they're going to be sources of inspiration for a lot of us. How <laughs> we know they exist? <laughs> As, how many bests of are there, everyone? Yeah, I, I, uh, uh, Nathan's in the chat. Yeah, I have Nelson, eleven. Right? Yeah, twelve. Oh wow! Then you have more than me, so I, then okay. I haven't gotten all of them. So yeah, yeah. and all and also Paul Paul Luby. Yeah. Eric mentioned Eric mentions the throne of wood, so it's Eric. It's Eric Mona. Uh, we'll I'll awesome. double check yep. that though. Wow, that's that's wonderful. 
I'm not starting with the first log, though. I think he eventually numbered his. All right. We're learning stuff now that I never thought. Uh, that's great. I'm so happy you came on, James, and, and really. Well, thank you. Uh, yeah, this is awesome. All right. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I, I want to talk about some, some things here. Yeah. Thieves Guild. All right. Yes. It's um, it's not anywhere near in depth that Greyhawk is, but nothing is, right? With all the quarters right. and all that's, you know. But uh, we all have our contacts here, and I have them written down. So here's here's your original article. And I got all the notes down for all the locations. Um, you know, there's actually a Guild of Adventurers here in uh, the Trade Town. Now, yeah. your, your sections are named a little differently than um, than Paul's, if I recall. Yeah, so, my so, mine were based on the that uh, the the adventure begins map. Okay, what I had to work up from the the adventure begins map. So when you come here to Paul's, it, there there are sections that are already done, like the Bonded Barrel Ghetto, um, and then for for uh, for James's, you have uh, West End Trade Town, the Docks, uh, Temple Row. Uh, the catacombs. Um, I may be missing a couple here because I got the North End. North End, yeah. My stuff's all over the place because I got notes everywhere. Um, but yeah, you got some really wonderful stuff, both of you. Uh, and, look, Madame Trajan's mentioned in here too. Mm -hmm. So sh that's a that's another uh, you know uh, name. Uh, her, that's her. That's her. What do you call it? front name for uh, slippery slide cat? Yeah. So yeah, you got a lot. Yeah, of we the, the the sign of the rose. Um, so A3 and A4 are my favorite modules that I ever played in. Okay. And part of the reason was because I brought a monk and a gnome. And when we and the monk was a female monk. And so um, when we get to the sign of the rose, so she um, integrated herself, infiltrated the brothel. And the story goes that she killed her first John. <laughs> And when she was hiding the body under the bed, she found the trap door to the dungeons. Ah. So then the rest of the party came, but every time one of them came to this brothel, they came one by one. They were all asking for her. <laughs> and they were all going, you know, and then so my monk has never heard the end of it ever since. But um, that's cool. <laughs> yeah. And then. And then when you get to the dungeon of the slave lords, there's not your monk goes from, you know, this kind of soft armor class six might get killed kind of character too. You have the best armor class and ability to fight in the entire party. <laughs> you know, surprise, you're taking point. Yes. So, uh, and then, and then the gnome speaks burrowing mammal because first edition gnomes could speak burrowing mammal. Yeah. And when we ran into that giant badger, hi, we're not food, but we'll take you to food. <laughs> we fled, fed the slavers to him. Burrowing, ma yeah, burrowing mammal, and then sylvan elves with uh, with woodland creatures, right? Yeah, yeah, they were the, they were the great languages. But hey, I still use it. Yeah. Uh, so, and here you have the Grok inventories outside. Uh, uh, they're in words. outside of a keep in the village or just out of outside yeah. of Harby. Uh, and they have the mountaineer militia comes in sometimes. Uh, they're mentioned in from the ashes, and then uh, some of the other uh, 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 priests: Weja, Dor Jormi, Miris, Osprum. Um, yeah. Then, I tried to go with the matriarchal religions, you know, and have them be heavily featured okay. in the city. That's a smart move. You do say Cuthbrights have a small shrine here, and uh, the, there's a, a temple dedicated to Mayheen, and that uh, I know that gets uh, built up a lot. Yeah, with, with in in uh, in Paul's because um, the Longlands are on the rise in Paul's, and that's why I like a lot about yeah. we have a lot of Longland player characters in my campaign, so uh, that are part of that family. Um, yeah, which is which is which is neat. So yeah, and I like that. I mean, the the Longland family was really cool in Paul's article. I really like them, and there's a lot that can be done with them. Um, so yeah, the, the, I love how they're trying to build the the temple, and it, uh, there's always an issue, like like yeah. it's cursed. You know? Yeah. So it was some really good. Uh, and here's Gormadoc, who's originally from the original uh, Rogues Gallery, shows up in here too, right? Oh yeah, that that was that was one I didn't pick up on. That was that was real good. Yeah. Longlands do come from Art of Active Evil, Anna. Did you know that? Okay, awesome. Yeah. Yep. Well, yeah, Daedri is is she's even on the cover of of the Art of Active Evil, and she she was prominently uh, okay yeah. 
figure out. Yeah, she's she's part of Gord's party. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, I used to have a cross-reference chart where I wrote every family member that I used, and I couldn't find it because, you know, it's, I have, you know, me with my yeah. bad chicken scratch everywhere. But I'll find it eventually again. But I had all of them down. And I, and I used some of yours, James, and then changed yeah. them to Norbalos or, you know, uh, the Faris. Right. Yeah, so uh, it worked real uh, you know, well. But I used a lot of names from yours, too, um, in that. So let's do some uh, some uh, some highlighted uh, locations here. Um, you got the um, – and, your, and yours, and then I'll bring up – <coughs> excuse me. Not back up here. All right. And you have it like here, the cranes are highlighted. And it's hard to see the lettering here, but that's okay. Yeah, my handwriting's terrible too. Oh, we fit in together. But notice it's by orange is um, bar or in. Purple is a cross reference location. Like that's a Temple of Osprey, I think. Uh, yeah. that, was in, that was in Paul's. <sighs> Blue is. Temple, I think Temple that is not in Paul's, uh, and um, and then uh, Pink was Standard Business. This is the trade town. As you can see, they're all over the yeah. place in there. Yeah, I think that's how I did it with color coding. Yeah. yeah. So, and I wanted Trade Town to be a place where you could pretty much get almost anything you wanted, and then you could even make some choices. Mm -hmm. you know, yeah. Where it's like yeah. you know, where there's competitors. You know, and there'd be like guild versus non-guild, you know, you know, someone might have a skill set like there's one silversmith that's a smelter and then one that isn't. Um, but the one that's not a smelter has a better product, you know. Um, so there, there's a lot of different things for, that you could do um, and make choices with. So I was really trying to you know, create opportunities and a couple of different fishmongers. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so here, let me. So I love I fell in love with the trade town area because it felt like a little. I don't want to say, I don't know this is being stereotypical, but it felt like a Chinatown, right? It, it, yeah. it, it was like your own little world. This is like the foreign quarter for Greyhawk, right? This yeah, it's is like a town in the town or a town village in the city yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. So let me see if this was in Trade Town. So you have like the Adventures, the Adventures Guild, which I uh, – I have an Adventures Guild in my Altamira too, and uh, you need to have an Adventures Guild. I think it's it, it's a must. Yeah. Adventures Guild. I'm trying to see some highlights here. Mercantile, the pawn shop, uh, the weapon smith at, on twelve. Um, yeah, he sells masterworks in my game. Ferric Last Star. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, we uh, they've gone to the gem cutter multiple times. They've gone to the herbalist, the T five multiple times. They've gone to Ariel's Magic Shop to try and get some heroism potions once. T4 right here. Yeah. She also has a few lesser potions of healing. But they, um, actually, no. They gave her the uh, ingredients to make a, a heroism potion, if I recall. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. yeah. Now, the Magic Shop, now that can be real handy because, you know, that's a source of quests, too. Oh, definitely. Yeah. I mean, her sister, um, just cool. the legendary Chispa Alicante. Her first adventure was a trip to the Great Kingdom to find an Ixel Chittle brain. Oh, see, so you pronounce so the, that the better whole... than I've ever. I, I go Zidazactyl. It's Ixel Chittle. I have no idea what it is. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I call it. And if okay. I can prove me wrong, I'll take it. But uh, that's um, awesome. Yeah. So, so in the next in the next um, O Earth Journal when it comes out, the Chendle School of Magic's included. Oh, wow. That's... And so three of my main characters were from Chendal. There's a paladin, Chispa, who's a magic user, and a guy named Morago, who's an illusionist. And he gets mentioned in here somewhere, too. Um, but, you know, he he did an extra year to be an, become an illusionist. Have... What's up? Hey. And, and because he did an extra year, Regimus and Chispa went – on behalf of her father's magic shop to go to the great kingdom to get this Ixel Chittle brain. And so, you know, sending people on these quests, you know, like, Oh, I need this, go find it somewhere, you know, or right. yeah, you know, and that can be a great setup as well. And so that's one of the things I did with the magic shop. And also you need somewhere to get those complex reagents. You know, Definitely. anyone can back Wano anywhere, but like, you know, for a cone of cold, you need that crystal, 
cone, you know, the brass yeah. plates for Maybe some diamond powder and stuff yeah. like that, that are hard yeah. to find. Yep. Yeah. So, so I mean, if you, you, so, you know, if you're going on a springboard for adventures, you want to have a place where you can buy that stuff. So you're not, your campaign isn't mired in trying to find stuff. You can just be like, okay, well, we have the place for that. You go get mm -hmm. that, you know? So from my memory, uh, the, the, the place that they stayed the most early on, which was cheap, was the Merchant's Wayhouse, I think it was, right here. Respectable okay. and reasonably priced. The beds yeah. are clean. The tavern fare is good. The price is average. It's occasionally had its problem with these, but no one is perfect. That's where they would, they stayed originally, the very first Hardby group, and then they, they moved onward out from that as they you know got up and, and more power um, to uh, the West. The West End's like the ritzy section, if I recall. Is that yeah, correct? it is. Yeah, and the, um, so yeah. I'm not sure if you can see this, but I have. And I wanted to have a ritzy section. Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh, yeah, a city, yeah. especially like a trade city, needs to have some that, that generates wealth, and and there should be at yes. least a few people that have have kind of <laughs> snitched up enough to to make them rich, so to speak. That. Yeah, so Gary Hulian's yeah. on, by the way. There, uh, yeah, James little and... Gary. So a little sneak hey, peek. A little sneak peek. Gary will be on next week with Sam. We'll talk about it at the end. All right. So um, here was from an adventure. I made that a Falcoon temple right there and just highlighted P4. Okay. Uh, and then mm -hmm. this was uh, um, this is uh, um, another uh, location that the, uh, a couple of the characters live. That's why I, I color highlight different. Uh, so we, we've really added in uh, some some things. Uh, oh, hey, what's up, 491? Uh, but here's a funny thing. This is kind of corny a little bit. Uh, too bad Tim's not on. Tim's character... Now, my my good friend Tim, everyone knows him, ever mysterious Tim, had his character named from Inglorious Bastards, Hugo Stiglitz, right? Well, he had his sister, and his sister uh, was always jealous of him dating ladies. So, at the Plow in the Stars, which is at W8. All right, let me go there. Another great, uh, and that should be before this, right here. Plow in the Stars, Pedro Gastor. Uh, Boring. A uh, high set. It's pouring. Pour. Uh, oh, is it pouring? Oh my god. Yeah, gosh. it's pouring. Yeah. So, so, so the plow of the stars is a real place. Okay. Okay. Uh, it's on Second Street in Philadelphia. Second and second and second and, uh, second and it's, no second and um, I want to say between South? Market and Walnut, Chestnut, Chestnut Market and Chestnut. Okay. Um, it was a bank, and so what happened was a bunch of Irish expatriates, including this guy Porig, who was in a lab I was working in. So when I was in med school, 1997 to 1998, I took a year off, and I was working in this guy's lab, Garrett Fitzgerald, up at Penn. And so we had a guy Porig who was a, a researcher in the lab, and. He was always talking to this guy, Jerome, uh, on the phone, and he was always coming in late to work. And and then he's like, all of a sudden, he said, you know what? I quit. I'm opening a restaurant bar. And this restaurant bar is the Plow and the Stars. Wow. And he was he was a partner in it. And so I had to include Porig because, you know, it yeah. was one of my, it was one of my haunts, you know, it, when I was, you know. Yeah. And I love and, the names, too, both Porig yeah. and, and, and it's it's great. So yeah. fantasy-esque. Yeah. yeah, I mean, there's there's a lot of names that and in there that took inspiration from various random sources. Um, some are some are anagrams. Some are, um, you know, care. Some some are people I who's, who I know, um, but modified their names. Some of them are um, uh, drug names, medication names. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's okay. Because you know, medication names are brilliant for character D and D characters. If you okay. can't come up with a name. You Definitely. Know, look up a medication and look up either its brand name or its or its generic name. And there are that's, tons of them in there. So that's the second Harvey bar based on a real life bar. Uh, what's the first one there, uh, uh, Paul? So real quick, as Paul's answering that, uh, this is corny. But um, there, uh, his his way. It says here one on more than one occasion, Porig has tried to fix up one of his barmaids with a handsome adventurer. So I had him have five barmaids. Are you ready for the names? Yes. Sab Sabrina, Kelly, Jill, Chris, and Tiffany. Perfect. They're all Charlie's X, Charlie, the Charlie's Angels, right? <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, but the sister didn't like it. The sister, I, I don't know if you remember this, Anna. Uh, remember, he brought his whole band onto the onto the 
onto the field of, of fight and the whole yeah. group, the red shirts, right? Because they all mm -hmm. got killed. Well, the sister actually made um, the first one he was dating, Sabrina, have an accident and disappear. He actually actually took care of him, her. <laughs> yeah, because she was that jealous. <laughs> Tim's nuts. So, yeah. The fun things that happen in Harby. It's a bar in Dundee, Scotland. Uh, oh, okay, cool. You did, man. You did. You did. Um, but you know, we're all getting old, so I 100% don't remember. Church of Lydia is here. All, um, so the the West End is, is the higher end. The East End Playhouse. Uh, you got uh, Mariva Athelvanova. Maria Athelvanova. So Maria was, is actually in my campaign. She's a cavalier. And she's a, it's, she's a Forgotten Realms campaign character. Um, she's not in Greyhawk. And so I just wanted right. to throw some throw her in somehow, but um, but in, in this she's a bard, but um, the real character is a cavalier. Um, she's more of an NPC than a PC um, in our my old Forgotten Realms campaign because she's the uh, heir to you know the the Grand Duchy of Athelvania, which is a made up Grand Duchy in the Forgotten Realms in our campaign. Well, Ed would so. appreciate that. Yeah, no, it's um, yeah our. Our Forgotten Realms campaign when I was in medical school was very much a what a Forgotten Realms campaign should be. I mean, it was like high on high on camp, high on magic, high on it was over, the whole thing was over the top. So it was the entire party were specialty mage multi-class, which you're not allowed to do in second edition, but we did it anyway because we wanted an insanely high magic campaign. So you mean, uh, yeah, we had that discussion on Sunday, but uh, illusion, the only one you could technically you were supposed to be able to do is illusionist for gnomes, but right. uh, she's doing invokers and what fighter invoker, Elvin, right? We had an invoker ban. Okay. So it was invokers were too OP. Yeah, I agree. Well, that's why, <laughs> so, that's why but I like, you know, us. I mean, an enchanter thief. Yeah. How fun is that? That is cool. Yeah. That is cool. Definitely. So, hey man. Play the game however you want. That's that's what I've always yeah. said to everyone. All right, yeah. so the, the brothel, the sign of the rose, which is uh, where Madame Trejan owns, but uh, um, her assistant's Madame Brianna. Is that someone real? Yes, that's someone <laughs> real. That She was in A3. She was actually the original Got owner it. of the sign of the rose. Okay. So in, in A3. It's all coming back. That's, yeah. That's awesome. Let me see what else we have here. So thanks, Tina. There's a whole lot of Scarlet Brotherhood fronts and things in this city too going on, because they're everywhere. Yeah, um, absolutely. Uh, yeah, I mean, and uh, of course, Scarlet Brotherhood is everywhere. Yeah, yeah. Um, trying, it's Gar's Tooth, another one that we've used. Nasbo Chandril, a halfling. Yeah. yeah. Who's that name? He was one. He was one of my characters. Okay. Um, the 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 party with the cavalier. Okay. So, so it was a cavalier. There was a ranger, um, him, um, a magic thieves. user, and my my friend took me through the funny ha ha castle Greyhawk with them, oh, and it, and it was that was a blast. But you know, I I repurposed them to do um, the the oh, Forgotten goodness. Realms as NPCs. Cool. When I was DMing that. I'm trying to just find out some high, other highlights through some of my notes here on the sides of these pages that I have printed. Yeah. I think I named, I think this one, the Hard Bay Inn, which is at N6. I think that's North End, right? Yes. Yeah, I think I named the owner, the Hard Bay Inn is, it doesn't have a name of an owner. I think I named it uh, after a porn star. Kendra Jade, yeah. Uh, the hard, large, the hard Bay Inn is ex excellent security room. Yeah, Hard Bay Inn is the temporary home for many adventurers because they use that temporary home to many adventurers who seek their fortune in the hundreds of ruins in the southeastern domain. So yeah, and you got the tri um, you got uh, Tritheri. You have a lot of temples here too, which is good. Yeah. you know, yeah. uh, throughout the city, so a lot of them. Uh, also in Paul's, they are noted as well, and he's got some that are really highlighted real well. And, and what I love about Paul's too is like he's got ma he's got Mainums and Longlands and Gurnish Gears. He's got all the named yeah. people running through it. Plus this, which really drew my attention. That's the tattoo magic creation, which yeah. I advanced yeah. on this through mm -hmm. relics and rituals. 
in, in, in the third edition Rolex and Witch Rules books. Hardby fight. No fighting here. It's mer it's a it's a mash together, Gary. I took them and shoop, smashed mm. them all together and cross referenced the maps and all like a crazy person. Yeah. So no, and I think I mean I think the way he integrated the families together, Paul integrated families was fabulous too. You know, because some people with their with Harvey, they like to have the six families, you know, as they were described. Um, you know, some people killed off the six families, but you know, he really integrated them nicely and kind of did what I tried to do, which was integrate the gynarchy with the trade, with the um, with the trade and with the uh, with the military. Um, you know, and even in mine, Mariana Ferris' sister is taking the vows as a priestess of Lear. Which is one of the magic, which is one of the uh, priestesses of like theater or something like that. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, so you know, I, I mean, so, and he does the same thing, which I think is great. Where he's integrating the families into the different elements of the city, all and the over politics, the, the politics. Yeah. So, because all the every city's got their 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 families, so their prominent families. Stay so. stay on pause real quick. The, oh, he does a really great write up on the Order of Throne of Wood Chapter House. Which he talks about here. The order was originally, I can't even say this, Yevis Yal Akosh in Ancient Chile's Order of the True Womanhood. So in my game, you know, we have all dudes, right? For, for yeah. my original group. But we, there's a lot, we have a lot of female characters, uh, PCs and NPCs. And the goal in all the Harby groups is to get invited to join the Throne of Wood. That's, yeah. that's, that's the highest honor you can get. So I think, I, I think there's four between three adventuring groups that have, that have been uh, asked to join. So, well, that's awesome. Yeah, definitely. And that's yeah, part. I thought that was also a really cool touch. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. And there's a redoubt of the shield mating. I think that's the one that uh, is cursed there yes. as well. Temple Zodal. Uh, that's funny. Yeah, it, really some great things in here. Um, all right. So, let's go to um, give me some highlights of some stuff that you want to bring up that, you know, the. <laughs> That uh, that I have not touched on, uh, I like I said I've used you know the Southern Point has been my, our go-to. We actually yeah. even had an assassinate uh, assassination attempt right in the bar in broad daylight uh, to Michael Baton right there. Uh, Anna, he, it was uh, the Harby. Uh, here, here's a this is why didn't that come up? There we go. So that's that's the and you can't see that it's on the docks, but um, that's what I pictured the Southern Point to be, uh, mm -hmm. and the inside. And this is just a uh, they're all NPCs. There aren't any player characters in this picture, but in future and future uh, ones, I even added more adornments to it and things. And uh, yeah, um, there was a uh, the uh, priest of Zilchis lost to Alita. So yeah, he he got and they put his head on display and on a pike in divers. So, because that's originally where he was from. So, yeah. yeah. So, what highlights uh, do you want? Uh, other things we like to share. So, we didn't really talk about the catacombs. Yeah, please. Let's do. Yeah, that. please. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's do yeah. That. So, the catacombs was, you know, so that you could do a, you know, in one sense, you could do a brief, um, a, a brief um, dungeon crawl, if you wanted to, and then also, you know, there's like Scarlet Brotherhood safe houses under there. There are. Because of the, because of the, I really leaned into the idea that there was sort of a geothermal um, area uh, in Trade Town, so that the um, oh, that makes the sense. tradesmen could take right care, take take advantage of the steam power. Mm -hmm. Oh, cool! And you know that was going to allow, you know, having the steam power is you know is also allows you to have strange mischief to happen because there are you know magma methods, steam methods that. You know, wherever there's steam, wherever there's magma, you know, there are gateways to the uh, quasi-elemental planes. Yeah. And so, or the para-elemental planes. And so, you know, nothing would be more fun than a method getting loose in town. Um, you also have some of the temples underground. There's an entire area that's a fungi forest. And then you have the um, the catacombs where all of the uh, where all of the gynarchs are buried. So you have an area where it's the burial ground for all of the uh, Gynarchs. And a Scarlet and, Brotherhood safe house. Yes. Oh. Yeah. Beautiful, right there. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. yeah, and 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 it's and there's a lot of very hard to get from point A to point B. So you're not necessarily going to stumble on stuff necessarily. Um, 
you know, and there's a few different ways to get in and you have to traverse, you know, some magma and some other things like that to get to some of the interesting places. Yeah. Plus, uh, you know, uh, probably if some of them have been blocked off by or trapped by people who don't want, uh, people, uh, you know, those traversing. So yeah, that's cool. Um, yeah. I always loved, I always loved the map. Um, the one that's, uh, in gray and green with, uh, the Greyhawk one showing sh Greyhawk city showing yes. the other, and I know Malden expanded on it. <laughs> and this is, this, <coughs> excuse me. This is all you really need to, uh, to do that stuff. Uh, underneath, um, I see C seven steam springs, and I see they that they there's one they run over here and then they run up top too. So there are yeah. multiple locations. Yeah. Wow, mm -hmm. that's neat. Yeah, and the tradesmen take advantage of it, and so I mean, you know, if you're doing a later edition game with artificers and things like that, I mean, there's a lot right. that you could unpack with that. I mean, I've I've never played an artificer or played anything after second edition anyway, but um, but I mean, it's an opportunity. All right. Hopping back, I missed. So you did say about the Rennie here, and I got D9. Yeah. So docks. So the Rennie actually have their own docks on, in yours. Uh, barges yes. docked at any time. Average, the docks are almost in their quarter of the city. So that's interesting. Uh, now, I know that there was kind of barge town is theirs in Greyhawk, but it's kind of out of the way. This is not really out of the way, which is no, neat. It's more like in the center yeah. of things. Yeah. Yeah. Because they're welcomed. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. You know, I mean, it's, 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 they're, they're not, you know, they're not untouchables. Just like you know, half orcs too, right? Half orcs are welcomed in RB as well, which is. Yeah, they are. And, and, he, and uh, Paul talked more about half orcs than I did, but okay. um, yeah, I mean, I, I don't think that the um, half orcs are going to be hanging out in the North end, but uh but right. you know, I mean, half orcs will be you know just fine, you know, especially mm -hmm. you know in the uh, in the dock areas and the in the worker the more blue collar areas of town for sure. So another minor difference, and I'll note this and I'll show both maps. Uh, you have there's walls around the the original small area of the city, but when you look at the one from this, it is walled. So yeah. uh, um, thoughts on that. It's just, it's just a palisade though. It's nothing major, right? It's just, yeah. it's just, so there's no reason. I, I always assumed I didn't do it on the map, that that's what's around the outside of yours too. Right. Uh, no, uh, I have no wall on the outside. Okay. And I actually address it in the article. Um, okay. You know, they, they really are expanding and okay. they're growing and they're also yep. saying, we're not afraid that we have to hide behind a wall. Mr. Patrick. Okay. Then like we got we got it. You know, we're 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 confident that we don't need a wall to protect the outer part. The wall is almost historical. Okay. Fair enough. Yeah. Meaning, meaning it's, it, I can imagine in this in most cities, meaning the wall is such a major investment that you either yeah. make it to 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 have a statement, meaning when an empire will come and say, well, we, we're going to establish ourselves, then they can enclose the large area that is doesn't have people yeah. living in it just to make a statement, so to speak. We're going yeah. to invest here and so on and do it even and then hope to cash it back on that investment much later. But otherwise, normally that you need to have the people there both to build the wall and to pay for it and to have a reason to build it in the first place, yeah. so to speak. So usually the city will come first or at least be there enough, so to speak, yeah. to 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 to. Yeah. yeah. To, yeah. To and the city needed, was so built yeah. with that wall to protect mm -hmm. it. Yeah. Um, and right. it was like sort of in the early history, like raiders were coming, you know, from from the hills. Uh, it was with, yeah. with the spring rains came the came the orcs and the humanoids raiding. They built the walls then. And it was after things calmed down after that, that they then expanded beyond the wall. Yeah. And, and then, then the same. Oh, sorry. They never, yeah. And they never felt the need to build another wall yet. You yeah. Know, and and, mine, and mine. Mm -hmm. And that's the, the other reason, meaning there, there's a lot of walls are there by necessity, meaning yes. we need it in order to stay here as a defensive. Otherwise, we will be invaded or, or looted yeah. and, and so on. But it can also be a statement of even if they're not really militarily needed as to send a statement yeah. of, of safety, of power, of, yeah. of wealth, and, and to simply as a PR, mean we, we have the coolest, biggest city, look yeah. at our walls, so to speak, yeah. as an impressive statement of, of 
empire building. I, I bet that the Great Kingdom built walls around a lot of their cities just to prove they were a huge empire that could do it, so to speak. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I, I think the, the Palisade fits much nicer with Paul's article. Yeah. Mm -hmm. with the tone of his city yeah and you know with ours because with mm -hmm. my with my heartbeat it's it's yeah. it's expanding it's growing right and, exactly yeah you know, it's like you know great it's not Greyhawk. ready for another wall yeah it's like greyhawk you had the first little first you have the, the inner city and then then you have the 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 first that like old city was enclosed in in itself first you have like the the original keep on that tiny little island i'm talking about gary's version here that is like yeah. a little island in the gray run that has an initial little uh, fortification that was i think the the baron of selinton's original little uh, hideout so to speak that was yeah. his little keep and then he built they built the town around it on the other around it with the river in the center that became eventually old city and then first old old town that was then the new town and then the foreign quarters next to it and then when the the boom town took off and great kingdom ca came and they invested heavily in it they built the new the, the big city walls so to speak yeah. so it's and i have it in 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 quit wall i had the walls had a different story then it was originally was a little flan town that had a little bit of walls but then the great kingdom came in and and as a statement they they were trying to attract the people to set up shop and and to expand north so they built huge walls that was much bigger than the population that mm -hmm. need at the time as an investment for the future and as a statement because we're an empire we're here to stay and we're here to expand and rule so they built yeah. huge walls that are way bigger for a city of, of 25 30 thousand and and it took years or decades or centuries to even reach half of that population and the the final part of the city that the great kingdom had planned was only an embryo and was never built because the, the, then the the king the the great kingdom started to fall apart and and so on so that the people never showed up and the money dried up and and he was forgotten so to speak as part of the story i got one other one that i forgot yeah um but it, it's cool to, to make fortification part of the history and character of the city and yeah. not all walls are the same or built for the same reasons so yeah, yeah it's great i agree with you there so a big and it's nowhere near as big as greyhawk but it's not supposed to be yeah. is that the the hard you have here Harby, the Harby Academy, this prestigious academy is where the children of the wealthy of Harby are educated. So a lot of our venturers are academy members, um, and there's a, a, a dues, or they were they, they actually went to school here. Who's Kendall Murdix? So Kendall Murdix is, uh, I just made him up for the, uh, for, the, um, for the article. So he is an illusionist. He is a magic user who is sort of the... Um, you know that you know the uh, the police song "Don't Stand So Close to Me." Yeah. You know the teacher that all the girls have a crush on. Yeah, him. <laughs> he's that guy. Okay. And so, so, but he's the head of school. He's the first male head of school. Yep. At the Hardby Academy, um, and you know, there's a little story in here a little bit later where they talk about um, that he. He, he goes up to Greyhawk every year for like, there's like a, an illusionist tournament and it's in the, it's in the holidays. Um, and, um, you know, he was just recently defeated by um, a guy named Morago Samalar, who was an illusionist who, who survived the wars. And, you know, he's basically my illusionist from the wars, but, but, uh, but he's, he's basically just the head of school. He's an illusionist. Um, and, you know, he's, he's a teacher and he teaches, you know, he, he runs the school that these, uh, wealthy children of Hardby get educated at. Um, and so since a lot of the family of the Gynarchs and all that are there, you know, teaching magic to those who are capable of learning it is part of their education. And for those who aren't, you know, I'm sure the curriculum includes other useful things um, that would be part of a, you know, proper medieval education. I have him 12th now, by the way, instead of 11th. Oh, fantastic. And uh, he, his... Um... Deputy is her name is Francine Debornay. <laughs> Excellent. And, and what does she? What is? What does she do? She what well, I have her as a dual class human. All right, so mm -hmm. she's a a priest, and then she became a mage. So she's both. Um, cool. And she uh, she also is in the throne of wood, and also a uh, will um, 
give recommendations as well, uh, you know, uh, uh, to members. So uh, double thing. She's a main contact because he's like the he's like the head. You don't go to the headmaster for problems. You need someone to go yeah. to for problems. So yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah she's like the deputy. So mm-hmm. Harvey's High production of Grease is amazing. That's funny. <laughs> so um, third to fifth, second edition adventure, four sessions, four four hour sessions. Hmm. I'd run a Sentinel in the Gauntlet from first edition and run it in second. That's what I would do. There mm-hmm. you go. That's what I would do. I run Broom Brass. I run Sentinel and Gauntlet. Those two. That's what I would do. Cool. Yep. Yeah. Two adventures and then run and, and welcome. Yeah, um, broom, uh, yeah. Yep, absolutely. So Broom Brass X, welcome. Yep, just yep. uh just a suggestion there. So I know we're getting close to time. I know you have to start yep. doing uh you know uh. Get doing your job tonight. Yeah, I have to start so. doing my job. I have telemedicine clinic starting at eight o'clock my time, so I'm gonna have to get off in about five or ten minutes. No problem. Okay. So, uh, what else yeah. would you like to? Uh, I really appreciate you coming on. Uh, this oh yeah, this awesome. has been fantastic yeah. discussion. So thank you so much. And oh, any shout course. outs I mean, and ideas or, or, or things that you need to want to? Mini, do you still game in 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 regularly? Honestly, honestly I haven't. Uh, yeah. When I got married, I hung up my D twenty. Oh, um, uh-huh. uh-huh. Well, mostly because when I'm so so I basically most of my gaming was with my two of my friends, Joe and Scott Mm -hmm. Um, and Scott's up in New Jersey still. And then Joe is was in Texas and now moved to South Carolina. Now, his gaming continued while he was in Texas with uh, remember Blue Sponge. Tom, Tom, uh, Tom Harrison. I don't. So Tom Harrison, he was part of the um, Council of Greyhawk, and he's still an active gamer. And so okay. when Joe moved down to Texas, you know, I introduced them, and you know, you know, so they've continued to game. Um, I think at some point soon, uh, when you know, Jay, when my friend Joe gets settled in uh, South Carolina, uh, we'll probably be getting things going because I'm soon to be an empty nester. My son oh, nice. Just in high yeah. school, and, and so now thanks to online gaming, you can. Yeah. You can- Game yeah, again. and that's what yeah. we would be doing. You know, when, when, yeah. when Joe, if Joe has a proper setup, I mean, we would probably pick up where we left off with our okay. wars campaign, and then wow, you know, pick it up after really all those mean... years, man. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah, that's great. I, yeah. I was fortunate that most of my friends stayed in the local area, and we played. You know, been playing together since '80. I mean, I just got yeah. lucky with the way with the way schooling went and with the way careers went. You know, so that yeah. was it was fortunate. Well, you also ran a damn good game, so there was oh, a reason thanks. to stick around too. So yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And still do. Yeah. I appreciate that. So, uh, yeah, I, I uh, appreciate everything you've done tonight and come on and well, give us wow, yeah. some unbelievable tidbits of data that I, yeah. I never mm-hmm. knew uh, yeah. about. I'm, I'm trying to get, uh, I'm trying to get Nellis here to come on maybe with Gary or whoever and come on and do those, all those, uh, um, Best of Greyhawks. Yeah, go through. Over. I need to go through them again. I haven't go read them in like them. ten years, so I need to read them again. So yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, Nellis here would be great to have on. I mean, he's yeah, he's a super guy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Nellis here, that's he's too not- high. Noel Dare's too high. I just ran it, re-ran it again. Um, yeah, I, I would, I would stick, stay away from that. First one, I like, I like Sentinel on the Garland. So, um, well, thank you so very much. Um, any other anything you like questions from us about uh, you know, what's going on in the community? Everyone knows all this stuff going on now with the Dungeon Master's Guide and Greyhawk uh, going to be in it. Uh, the new Watsy book. We're going to talk about that Sunday night, you know, for the most part. But yeah, it'll be interesting to see what they do or don't do with it. Yeah, it well, especially open up DMs Guild. Everyone's waiting to see if that happens because there's uh, some yeah. of us are sitting on some things right now. We'll um, see what what happens, but it's it's interesting times. To yeah. Say, yeah. I, I mm-hmm. just I just hope they don't do anything too crazy, um, or too, for lack of a better way of putting it, cannon breaking, because I mean I think that they're the thing about Greyhawk that's so special is that, you know, when it was discontinued before the revival, there was so much thought and care and scholarship and just I mean you know I mean. Guys like Eric Mona and Gary yeah. Holian and the rest of the Council of Greyhawk, I mean, you know, they were like Talmudic scholars of yeah. the limited material that we had to work with. And, you know, you know, being able to interact with them on AOL back in the 90s was honestly really, truly special. And, you know, I, we, I've had such an appreciation for the setting and just so much what the, the Greyhawk community's done, you know, even in the 25 years since I wrote this article. I mean, you know, I'm coming up on my 25th med school reunion and I'm coming up on, you know, in you know, 25th anniversary of this article. And yeah. I mean, the fact that there are people who enjoyed it and are oh, using yeah. it as part of their yeah. campaign. I mean, I'm, mm-hmm. I'm honored. 
you know? Yeah, that's, oh, that's man. Great. I, I, when I found it, because, you know, I, just, I found it well before I was in the community. I was 38 yeah. years in the dark, you know, with my just my friends. I was like, oh, my God, this is per- perfect for what we're – because we were doing Greyhawk, and I was like, I want – Harvey just seems to got a little bit of an edge to it, a little yeah. different. And when I found it, I was like, this is great. And then I found uh, – Paul's almost at the exact same time. I'm like, mash. <laughs> mash yeah. it up together. So, well, yeah. thank, thank you so very much. I know you got to go, and yeah. I know you have to. Uh, but you're more welcome to come back anytime. You know, yeah, I, I hope, please. And if you, you know, if you, if you can, at some point, I get on Counterfire Discord if you're not already. Uh, that's, yeah, I am. Okay, yeah, you're I on there. Visit it. I don't need to visit it as much as I should, but I'm on it. Yeah, what awesome. a great, it's a great place for everyone uh, uh, to uh, with the thoughts going on. And there's so many great uh, publications out now. And I know Gary's got something coming out. He's going to sneak peek it on Sunday for next Wednesday. So, uh, yeah, for, uh, um, and I'm not sure if you're aware of it. So, um, well, thanks, James, and uh, I look forward to seeing you soon. Thank you for uh, such short notice coming on. Of this course. Yeah. Wonderful, wonderful it. discussion. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. yeah, 20 years ago, man, Paul, you know, it's it's nuts. Yeah. So. All right. Well, y'all have a good night. Yeah, have have yep. a good night, and thank you. Yep. All right. Bye. Bye. Yeah, we don't want to keep him. Keep him. Uh, no, no, no. Keep him from his important. Wasn't that cool? Yeah. I mean, oh, that was, uh, that, that was, awesome. was I was, was so, so happy great. that he was yeah. able to come. He was only going to come on. Yeah, yeah. he was only going to come on for an hour, and then he had no yeah, appointments on, on his uh, on yep. his uh, thing. So, uh, just a yep. wonderful one. I knew, like, I love Harby. You know me. I and I love well, Harby. Is cool. It's it's part of the original early yeah. Greyhawk, so to speak, early days. So so it's it, it's been there forever. And I had a war between the PC and NPC, and the PC lost. Right, uh, kind of. The the, mm-hmm. the PCs were kind of you know got burned yeah. out of their houses, and the pre, uh, the Temple yeah. of Zilchis got burned to the ground with all the priests inside. All sorts of great stuff in mm-hmm. my Harby. So twenty. Yep. Yeah, I know. Where'd the time go, Curtis? Isn't it crazy? Yeah. All right, look. I know everyone is up on this. All right, but I am going to hold this off. I, I may even just dedicate. I'm going to do a short on this. I may just even dedicate to this, this uh, you know, talking about the Dungeon Master's Guide. I may just dedicate the show. I don't have a topic yet for Sunday. Ed's supposed to come on probably the Sunday after. So I may just dedicate Sunday night's gabbing to it. Because I got a gabbing Saturday morning too. So mm-hmm. we'll get there. Two on this. two gabbins. So yeah. I have two I, gabbins I, this week. Yeah. Yeah. So mm-hmm. just note that I'm not uh, you know, I put I, I put a Twitter post out and I put a post out on Facebook about it, uh, my thoughts on it. Yep. And then I will I will discuss it a little bit more. So if you guys can oh, hold off trouble? till then, that would yep. be uh, awesome. Yeah. Uh, right. I have a little dog that is in trouble. That was uh, a big crash out the kitchen. Uh, uh, and here uh, he comes. Uh, uh, and he sits here and he trembles. Oh, uh, so, so he did it? I, I think he must have done something. <laughs> Do want, there's glass he's, everywhere? Oh, oh no. the, yeah. I heard uh, a big crash oh, no. of, of glass and stuff out the kitchen. And, and he comes in here and he sits in my lap and just trembles. So he looks so guilty. So he must have done something. That's funny. That's so funny. Yeah. So, exactly. I have cats for that. We don't need cats. We have this little guy for for that. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We're gonna do some quickie. <laughs> we're gonna do some quickie shout outs, guys, uh, guys and gals. Honestly, I'm burning yeah. out. I did have my uh, biopsy oh, yeah. today. Uh, yeah. I, uh, yeah. And I'm burning out a little bit here. Um. So I need yeah. to crash. So, uh, Anna, what's going on? Uh, first, yeah, we have the big, big <coughs> thing we need to that everybody in the Greyhawk community probably is aware of by now with the with the the, the kind of the leaks or I would say announcements on on the upcoming D and D twenty twenty four fifty year anniversary edition, so to speak. So so and and I felt I needed to comment on it and stuff. So I wrote this uh, blog post quickly today. This my first first thoughts. It's not something that I've been dwelling on for for a long time. And people have asked me, it's not my Greyhawk map in the new Dungeons Mask. We don't know whose it is. And no, I, I spe- what I would like to see will be a Francesca Barrel map. That will be fantastic. Her maps are gorgeous. They are works of art. And my guess, I don't know, Schley. but my guess is that it will be... Nah, Schley has done maps, but but he and probably do. But I, I wouldn't be surprised at all if it's a Francesca Barrel. She, I know she's worked on a lot of, of Wizard of the Coast stuff lately, and I will be honored. It will be so cool if if we have a her map because the tradition of an artistic setting rendering for for Greyhawk publications that that I think will be really really cool. 
So, try to so, add her on the show. She's shy and won't come on. We, we tried exactly. We've asked her. Yeah, yeah. I've asked her, but she doesn't want to. So, so, oh, so, but, that. but, yeah. Oh, yeah. But she's an amazing, uh, I would say more of an artist than a cartographer, but her, because her style her is way more she's artistic. Italian. Yeah, exactly. Way more artistic than it's she's cartographic. She's the opposite from, from me, so to speak. She has a website too. And she's, she's award winning amazing. too. Oh yeah, she has done amazing, amazing, amazing yeah. stuff. A lot of amazing maps, but she's she's basically yeah. What what Darlene is for calligraphy, she is map, for for one. general for doing wonderful renderings of of old maps and stuff, fantasy they're stuff. They're not so. they're not going to put an old map in a new book. They're not going to do that. It's gonna no, be I don't think so. I don't think no. so. Yeah, no, I I, I think knows, we man? will get a new one. So it might be a Schley, might be, but I I hold my th I hold my fingers and hope we get a Francesca Barrel map. That will be so cool to have that. So yeah. Well, yeah, you will get my map. You already have one version, and and okay. others are just in the work, so to speak. So, and and speaking of that, the GIS uh, progressing really well. So the borders are halfway done, and they're looking better than ever. So, so hopefully, I can very soon put together a sample first, a couple of sample maps. To 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 so we can get a good look and see what's doing there. I need to update the icons though. There's a couple of of things I want to do with the icons. And now I have a little trembly dog here, so <laughs> he's he's terrified for some reason. <laughs> it's right. funny. So yeah. for me, let's do this real quick, and then we'll do the giveaways. Yep. We'll get this to Raiden the Bones. All right, she's on, and uh, we'll we'll go there. Um, tomorrow, uh, Rob was on, but he's not now. Misbegotten of the gnarly, right out of Dark Druids. For tomorrow's it's going to be a one shot because i have to change out the entire terrain and then go with um oh my god i forgot to do those ads well i'm not doing them now i'm, I'm yeah. crashing i can mention that there will be a mapping stream on friday as well so uh, probably okay. only me but i will Excellent. work on it so yep mm -hmm. here's some pictures here's some uh, stage pictures for tomorrow uh yes um cool. so yes uh dark Dru it'll involve dark druids um, and I use those uh, uh, markers as dark druid symbols in my in my gnarly. So yeah, we'll have some fun with that. That'll be a one shot, low level, like fourth level, fifth level characters from uh, the Norwell Headhunter Initiates tomorrow, and that is on on Thursday, Saturday morning. Here's Saturday's a monster for me. 9 a.m. Rob Koontz, 9 to 11. Myself, Anna, and Alan Groey will be on. Okay, with Rob, 9 a.m. Saturday. 9 to 11. I got to immediately leave at 11, and then I got to go to my mother's for her birthday, which is actually on the 18th, from 12 to 3. When I'm done that, I'm going to rush back home and final prep for this that night. Oh, that's wrong. Here, this. The Red Wedding event, right, mm -hmm. is, is that night. So, um, yeah. There's a lot. <laughs> so, big Saturday. Uh, yeah. Big Saturday. Big, big Saturday. And Sunday night, we'll have a discussion on, I guess, uh, on Greyhawk and uh, Watsy, probably. Uh, maybe I'll put a throw a topic in that's amorphous around that. And then, here, this is – all right, Gary. Gary, I, I put this title up. I could be wrong on the title, but who cares? So, um, and here, uh, it, but for Sam, Sam Weiss and Gary Holian, everything you wanted to know about Vecna but were afraid to ask with Puffin Smedger and Sam Weiss. All right? So that's next week. So – Something's coming out very shortly, yep. correct, Gary? Mm -hmm. And uh, yes, and uh, we will have that next Wednesday's Legends and Lore. All right, last call, exclamation point drawing. Yep. Let the heckling begin. And Curtis, uh, did you answer my Discord about Sutter? Oh, you did, you did, you did. Yeah, absolutely, uh, Curtis. We will definitely do that. Toss in your flan and that we'll answer about all that flan tyr tyrannies. Okay, I can do that. I'll, I'll put, I'll, I'll take your names off and put everything you always want to know about Vecna and the Ur flan. How's that sound? Yes. Uh, yeah, that's a great, uh -huh. great point, Gary. Awesome. Uh, I'll yeah, do it. We that's can no tie problem. it into it because then we'll give it more of a Greyhawk spin that's than, awesome. than, than Vecna in, 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 in the old modern lore. So I threw it. that together today, Gary. It was quick. Oh, yeah. So, um, yeah, it's I, good. I, 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 yeah. Um, all right, here we and go. No, we don't go for treats and stuff up here. So, right, giveaways. Here we go. Let's see who wins a Classic DD reprint. The winner tonight is uh, it's Jeremy Astro Liar. There you go, dude. Let me know what you want. Oh. And thanks. Thanks there, Gary. Thank you so very much. You know, uh, uh, if it, 
10 o'clock this morning, there ain't no way I was going to do this tonight. And I just felt better as the day went along. Cause, uh, yeah, that's yes, good. Yeah, uh, all I'll say is uh, there is uh, red blood coming from multiple orifices. That's all you need to know. <laughs> <laughs> Woohoo! Jeremy, I'll get with you. Um, and uh, we'll talk about. Did you, do you have City of Greyhawk yet? Did I sent it to you last time? Because I just got these in from. Patrick, if I, if I sent you one already last time, but this is the full City of Grout box set. Let me know if you, this is really cool. If you don't have it, I will send that to you. If you do, then we'll do something else. We can discuss that. So, all right, we're going to read into Bones. Um, say hi to her, please. Um, did I just knock something over? Oh, my gosh. Yeah, I'll get it. So, um, yeah, I, we'll go into Bones this time. She's playing, and I'm really going to do some bad things Oh, I shouldn't say that. I'm really going to do some bad things to a couple characters uh, come uh, Saturday, and there's not a damn thing they can do about it. So it's going to be fun. All right, yeah, just check. Jerry. No rush. No rush. So, Anna, we'll see you, see you, uh, see you soon. Thank you so very yep. much. Mm -hmm. That was oh, fun. Oh, thank you, and this, this was awesome. Yep. All right. Uh, hit this button here. Sorry about the crash earlier. Yeah, have a great night, everyone. Let me uh, set the raid up. Let's raid and uh, say hi. Please just hang out a bit. You recovered hello. quickly, so it was only a two-minute yeah, that, yeah, that it just it was dumb on my part. No, no, it's, it happens. Yeah. yeah. I was trying to uh, fix the sound and fix, you know, and fix the, the camera a little bit, angles. Uh, where the heck is it? Search. I hate that. I can't. There we go. All right, look at this. Well over 75, 4, 3, 2, 1. I hope to see you all tomorrow night. Have a good one. Awesome.